Hard R. <laughs> that's the beginning oh. of the recording. <laughs> That's perfect because that's the best way that I could be on the fan. introduced. Yes, <laughs> we're watching Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship Yay. of the Ring, yeah, the Two Lord Towers, of the Rings. Bum, 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 bum. and Return of the King. They call it a trilogy. Robert, you're wrong. That theme was on point, wasn't it? That's the one. I love Mordor. The oh uh, by Howard Williams or whatever, the guy with the orchestra. I think. Yeah. Just, just Howard, to be clear, this is sure. the Williams. plural Lord of the Rings. I mean, not Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. Lord of Ring, Golem. Lord, Lord of, of Ring. ring. Oh, no, no, no. The, the Lord of Ring. Yeah, so Lord Lord of of ring. Ring. get it right, yeah. I've always preferred Lord, Lord of, of ring, ring, though. It's funnier. <laughs> Lord of Ring is hilarious. <laughs> the Lord I, of Ring. I, I don't know. I feel like the the in front of it makes it funnier because it's the Lord of Ring. 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 Like, Lord it's, of ring. like, it's not just Lord of Ring. It's got to be the Lord of Ring. A great game. Uh, with an apology that they semi recently Mist? said that they didn't even know was released. So, yes, it was oh. definitely AI, and the developers didn't even know about it. They didn't even know that they released an apology? I think that was it, yeah. That was it, the... seems to, it seems to be on brand for them, really, <laughs> considering the quality of the game. It's so funny. I feel like every other sure. month we find out some new piece of imbecilic <laughs> knowledge about this fucking game. And I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure they're. <laughs> I'm not sure they're entirely aware that they actually made a game. Yeah, either. no, they're probably like, not. I thought this was just a joke. <laughs> Why did you release it? What the fuck? <laughs> anyway, that's that's as great as intro as you need to say that we're going to watch one of the greatest trilogies of all time, if not the greatest trilogy of all time. The greatest. I mean, it's it kind is of hard greatest, to beat, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And we'd like for you to join us, I suppose, or at least watch this video while we commentate on what's so great and so terrible. That part will be pretty quick, I'd imagine. Yeah. You guys ready? Yep, I am ready. ready to All begin. Right. Three, two, one, go. Much that once was is lost, for none now live who remember it. I opened up my file in like the the media player and not VLC, so I can't add subtitles. Oh, you should just listen to the movie then. No, because fix that problem on your own so time. Yeah. What the hell? To, I, Everyone, shut up for the next three hours and twenty minutes, and this is going to be perfect. <laughs> it, it will make it easier for me to pay attention. It began with the forging of the great rings. Oh man! It's nice to hear the real Galadriel. Yes. It'll be cool when they yeah. make um, a TV show going over all the construction of these rings. It's going to be great. The greatest of Elven Smiths did not know what an alloy was. Did you know that you can mix metals together? What? What, what is this devil ray? And nine. Nine rings were gifted to the race of men. Which is your favorite <laughs> nine mortal men doomed to die? Mine is four. Um, I think six has got a lot going on. I don't know. I like nine because you can say it like it's nine. Nine! But they were all of them deceived. For another ring was made. It's funny how I'm seeing all this. I haven't seen these since having seen Rings of Power, so it's on the brain. I, I, yeah, I, I haven't seen this either. Loot it for you. Not at all. It's more so just like, look at the source that they almost just tried to destroy. He poured his cruelty, his malice, and his will to dominate all life. But it was a great way to start these movies. This quick, I mean, for those who hadn't read Tolkien, to, to be able to really, in a very short economical period of time, they set the stage. You know exactly what's going on. Three lands of Middle Earth fell to the power of the Ring, but there were some who resisted. I always did yeah. like the fact that this takes place like two and a half thousand years before like the <laughs> present, and yet technology has not advanced a single bit in that entire time. Yeah, yeah that's like every single fantasy series. Yeah, ever. That, yeah. It's just yeah. time lock for eternity. <laughs> I love that that scene where they all just like swing their swords in unison. It's like this giant machine, like meat grinder. Yeah. Yeah, it's victory. so cool. What do you guys think about having Sauron personified as a single figure? I didn't love it, but I, I get why it was necessary on screen just to give you some mm -hmm. sort of like give the audience some kind of representation of it. I'm really glad that they didn't go with the original idea to have Aragorn fight him. I agree with that. Yeah, Sword yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I remember when this came out and the discussions that were being had, because it's so damn good, the amount of problems people will have with it are very weird and specific. And I remember people being like, do you think it's a little goofy that it's a big tower with an eye that's the bad guy? Isildur, son of the king, took up his father's sword. It no. is something to chew on, like, it does, I haven't read the books, it is a bit different, but yeah, yeah. I think they're pretty good with it. 
But you have other characters like what when, when like uh, Elrond says his eyes focused. Is it Elrond who says his eyes focused here? You have other characters saying it, and it sounds cool. Well, when that's they the say thing, it. right? Wee. The world treats it very fucking seriously. That eye. Yeah. Sauron, the enemy of the free peoples of Middle Earth, was defeated. One thing that I like is that while notice, his, <laughs> notice how his finger gets flaccid. Notice how you should shut the fuck up. <laughs> the ring passed to Isildur, who had this one chance to destroy evil forever. I, I like how the eye, while it's not an eye on top of a tower in the book, they did take the imagery from a scene in the book and just repurpose it so that yep. there's a physical presence of him in the movie. It betrayed Isildur <laughs> to his death. Like, Frodo obviously sees it more and more as the ring takes hold of him, and like, every time he closes his eyes, he sees the, the eye watching him. And for two and a half thousand years, the ring passed out of all knowledge. Man, though, this is, for anyone who's completely unaware of Lord of the Rings, what an opening, in terms of just it's like, holy good shit. For 2000. It ensnared a new bearer. And then how it also just, the, the shift now. in tone when you go to the Shire. Oh, it's so chill. Uh, it's mm -hmm. the most important thing in this entire series was setting up like how wonderful the Shire is. Hobbits have been living and farming in the four farthings of the Shire for many hundreds of years. Yeah, and you would think it would almost seem like such a, it's such a jarring juxtaposition between all this like world shatter and stuff and the Shire. It's abandoned, Gollum. But something happened then the ring did not intend. But the way the outside world slowly starts to intrude upon it and, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the nine riders are sent out after Frodo and they start to encounter them as they're making their way. Yeah, it's pretty well done. It was picked up, a hobbit, Bilbo Baggins of the Shire. In the extended version, you see more of the citizens of the Shire and how mm -hmm. I love that they convey that there's this sort of disdain for Gandalf. You know, that he's like yeah. Timothy Leary of, of the world. When he shows up, people are going to smoke out and get a little crazy. Quite content to ignore and be ignored by the world of the big folk. And I, it, there's something so heartwarming about Gandalf chooses the Shire out of all places to be like, this is the blast. Is it and heartwarming or is it sinister? Yeah, he comes in, he's like, well, time to fuck up someone's life here again. <laughs> it does yeah. It does feel that way too. I think a new view would be like, you really, really? A, 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 couldn't you give the ring to someone who's big and strong? It's like, ah, oh, but that's the point. Hobbits must seem of little importance, being neither renowned as great warriors nor counted among the very wise. I do like the fact that Frodo is like you're late and what's so great about that is that he can get in gandalf's face like he has no problem mm -hmm. criticizing him so it establishes right away the friendship between oh. these two characters it has been remarked by some that hobbit's only real passion is for food it's um it's wonderful how much the dialogue can catch you up on the relationships a lot of these mm -hmm. characters have as we have also developed a keen interest in the brewing of ales and the smoking of pipe weed. Remember that? Remember we used to get good dialogue that told you a lot with very little. I mean, this cool. is outright a feast in terms of artwork. You get everything in this. But where our hearts truly lie is in peace and quiet. They didn't use um, CG to shrink. I mean, the fact that they're using scale doubles and a lot of it, even though they're force doing multiple passes, force perspective. Yeah. The force perspective stuff. stuff was mind blowing when I first saw how they did that. I was like, wow. It was amazing. The, the biggest chickens they could possibly find yeah. to put next to the people. <laughs> I, I love how every time you get a close up of the ring, you just know that that ring's the size of a fucking basketball. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. so cool. <laughs> it is no bad thing to celebrate a simple life. If this is the Harfits, we'd be like, yeah, we put up a sign without killing ourselves. Yes. Oh my god, yeah. Well, uh, if Bilbo <laughs> no, had hit like a hundred years, it'd be time to eat him. Yeah, probably. Yep. A wizard is never late, Frodo Baggins. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. Remember that Sean Connery was almost cast as he Gandalf. Was. He turned it down. Turned I feel down. like we'd all yeah. be lying if we said we wouldn't want to see what it looked like. I am like. very curious, yeah. It's wonderful to see you, Gandalf. <laughs> 
I didn't think I'd be sure I could be the worst person. Compared to Ian McKellen, I think he would have been terrible, but it would have been interesting to see all the same. Half the Shire's been invited, and the rest of them are turning up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, another thing about this movie that people forget is they were pioneering color grading software. It was really the way they were able to create power windows and, and, and eye lights and accentuate that stuff. <laughs> and so life in the Shire goes on very much as it has this past age. It's very handcrafted, but the the color grading in this film is is absolutely beautifully done. There's as much going on there as there was with Andrew Lesney's cinematography. Like everything else, it gives this film a bespoke, handcrafted Savile Row feel. For things are made to endure in the Shire, passing from one generation to the next. They try and duplicate it in other movies, but they can't. Part of it, I think, is it, so important is it was made at the exactly the right time. Like, yeah. I don't think this works yeah. 20 years earlier or later. Well, look at the Hobbit opening compared Ugh. to this opening. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Night and day. He's up to something. All right, then. Keep your secrets. Good. But I know you have something to do with it. Good gracious, man. This is all... It, it's like you're watching sometimes a watercolor painting. Yes. Um, you know, like, like really like painting come to life. Yeah, and it really was. I mean, they they had two fantasy artists, they had the two best Tolkien artists in the world working on this the whole time. You know, painting imagery, John Howe and and um Alan Lee. Uh, Alan Lee. Never had any adventures or did anything unexpected. If you're referring to the incident with the dragon, I was barely involved. And they um the fact that the fact that everybody was on the same page, that they had all of these people in, in creative key positions that were all really serving this singular vision. And while Peter definitely was, and Philip and Fran were filtering it all without what was going on with Weta and Weta Workshop and Weta Digital, I mean, they always, nothing was ever good enough. They were always making it better. <laughs> Remember and those you, days? you feel it. You've been officially labeled a disturber of the peace. Mm -hmm. You feel it in better. every frame. It yeah. also helps that there was like over a year just to prep for the movie before they yes. started shooting anything. Oh, God, yeah. Whereas yeah. with The Hobbit, they were given no time at all and didn't even have a script for the third movie by the time they started shooting. You can tell there's an ass load of effort that was done just to setting all this shit up before they started. And then The Hobbit was just like, oh, fuck, uh, let's make a movie without a script, I guess. <laughs> Ooh. Looking back at it now, it was such a wasted opportunity because they really could have done something on par with this. I think that's why, I don't know if you've ever seen any of those fan edits of those movies. There's a genuinely fucking great movie buried under like six a hours of, of fluff. Yeah, the Hobbit movies are incredibly sparse in terms of real it's, content yeah, it's, yeah you, you feel, feel the good. stretching it's the of overload of cartoonish action scenes that are super heavy on cgi well, it's very and tonally just... inconsistent mm -hmm. the fact that yeah. they were originally planning on doing only two movies and then the studio was like how about three yeah it yeah. just kind of tells you everything about how fucked the well, studio they based, based on they a book that's got like good 200 a... pages to work with oh, thank you any more visitors, well-wishers, or distant relations? And what about very old friends? I mean, you could make three movies out of it, but because you have a whole bunch of characters to work with, but the character work in the Hobbit trilogy is really kind of bad. It's thin as fuck. Um, Dear God, no. Good to see you. <laughs> 111 years old. Who would believe it? Well, I mean, I challenge you to, to really tell me anything about the dwarves. I, I think there are, I think only like four of the dwarves actually it matter. Yeah, the rest are just like interchangeable with one another. There's Thorin, there's the old guy, there's the one with Balin, the hat, there's right? the bald guy, and then there's those two brothers who really only matter because Feely and Keely. Yeah, yeah That's because the, uh, the elf there's... bitch is fucking them. Oh! That was the big takeaway I had when I first saw the bad. first one was that I can't remember much of the anything about the differences between the dwarves. While in Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship is so well characterized and sort of the individuals grouped together. Even though there's a lot of hobbits in there, you'd think, oh, maybe we'll have some trouble with that. It's like, no, Merry and Pippin, Sam and Frodo, they are very distinct. I can make you some eggs if you look. Oh. Just tea, thank you. Oh, right. 
fellowship and not to get ahead, but two towers are like a master class and like getting to know your characters in a, even in these long movies in a pretty quick amount of time with Rohan in two towers, you, you oh, get yeah. all these new characters like oh, in yeah. five minutes. That's actually and, crazy. Cause I don't even remember geez. when I was first seeing it. I was just like, who are all these people? And you know, after like 10 minutes, I was like, Oh gee, I hope these guys I work out. Okay. Like, what a great, yeah. What a great <laughs> intro to like Theoden and yeah. Wormtongue and Aemir. I want to see mountains again, mountains, Gandalf, and then find somewhere quiet where I can finish my book. The casting in these movies is so wonderful. The difficult uh, question would be, who's the worst casting choice in all of the trilogy? There really? is none. That's the answer. That's kind there of where none. it goes. Yeah. Trilogy ever made. You know, choosing Movie Bob as the troll was an interesting one. Oh, I feel thin sort of stretched like butter scraped over too much bread yes get in there yeah. <laughs> finest weed in the south valley what i'll say about Liv tyler and uh, orlando bloom i think that both of them have trouble with acting in a lot of their roles but they were kind of perfectly cast for the roles they had in this After Moria, there's a lot of really good acting from Orlando Bloom when he's like struggling to kind of come to grips with the fact that Gandalf died. Yeah, uh, just, that, yeah it, it looks like it just... shook him because Gandalf is someone yeah. that he's known to be. And he was be... really young. I mean, he was he yeah. was a, he was basically a newly minted actor. And you compare that to Rings of Power, and my God. Well, none of the actors in Rings of Power looked like elves and it wasn't even Elf. really just like i wouldn't even say it's just the look it's the way they like held themselves too they don't seem okay. elvish yeah in the way that they are here a lot of the actors and the people that they choose for the elves they just don't look like elves they just look like some guy gil galad just like he just looks like a guy he looks like he works at the jiffy lube you can there's this great effort upon each of the places, let alone the like species in Middle Earth, that they've they've tried to characterize it. They create a sense of culture. There I was, at the mercy of three monstrous trolls. There's a huge. Even the obvious... Hobbit did this well. Galadriel's just some bitch. Gilgalad is some guy. Celeborn is just some. They're all just people, and they shouldn't right. be. Sun's first light crept over the top of the trees. <laughs> Turn them all to stone. It, it was. It was like a, it was when an actor makes a choice how to play a part. They were also making choices from a production standpoint what they would do to accentuate these characters to differentiate them from one another. I don't know why I took you in after your mother and father died, but it wasn't out of charity. You were the one Baggins that showed real spirit. Rubs! Jumps! Unflowers! Bulgers! All the races, when they when they talk about Rohan, I mean, the design of the armor, the design of the, the colors they used in the fabrics were different than the fabrics they would use for the elves or different than what they used in Gondor. And you see all of that in the film. I mean, you're not necessarily aware of it, but you feel it. That was your idea! <laughs> 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 Well, it's nice that you can look at, there's like multiple different human civilizations that we see across these movies and not one of them looks the same. Rohan mm -hmm. doesn't look like Gondor, Gondor doesn't nope. look like Bree. And yet they're unified, right? All the people from that area. There's something that connects them all. It doesn't feel like a hodgepodge of random in, shit. Uh, Rings of Power. Everyone is, like, everywhere, no matter where you go, everyone is, they sound yeah. kind of the same. Well, They're all like a patchwork everywhere you go. Everywhere no just looks difference. like, everywhere looks like downtown LA. Even though they shot the first season down in New Zealand, it's like they didn't employ the landscape well. Whatever you're looking at has that weird TV fantasy look to it. Marianoc Brandybuck and Peregrine Took. I might have known. The whole Shire, obviously, it's shot on location for the most part, and it's it's very mundane, very normal, and it gradually eases you into the, the other fantasy elements mm -hmm. that come mm -hmm. in more and more as you get through the story. And it's, again, it's a great way of grounding it in reality and making you buy into the world because what you see initially is very real. I don't know half of you half as well as I should like, and I like less than half of you half as well as you deserve. It helps when you get to Moria. It is a very powerful like tonal shift and sort of world shift because you've been in 
pretty normal places the Shire on the way between here and Bree and from Bree to Rivendell. Even Rivendell is like, okay, like we're fantasy, but it's kind of, it, it's nice. It's really nice. You know, it's nothing crazy. Then you hit Moria and everything's super dark and underground and it's like, you know, boom, it hits really, really hard. If it was made 20 years earlier or 20 years later, it was like made at the perfect time when visual effects were becoming more of a part of movie making and were able to like accentuate and work in places where they couldn't use practical, but they, I mean, look at these sets, you know. I suppose you think that was terribly clever. Come on, Gandalf. Did you see their faces? Why should I keep it? I think you should leave the ring behind. Oh, my business isn't of yours when I do with my own thing. Never, Baggins! Do not take me for some conjurer of cheap tricks. Imagine if fucking Disney made this. Like, everything around <laughs> them would be just green screen. And I think that's a problem because, like, even a scene where, where Gandalf first goes and talks to Saruman at, at, uh, at Isengard, they'll show you an establishing shot that has an effect that's combined with live action and yeah. it'll pan down and you'll see the two of them talking outside, but they're, they're fairly medium shots, medium to close up shots. So there's, they don't have to put visual effects in them and it's them talking in real Ooh. environments. Then you cut to an effect shot. It feels much more seamless, but when you're in environments that are completely generated and there's no reality in them, you don't get that same feel. And this movie does both all the time. And so you buy into it. I'm trying to help you. The ring must go to Frodo. You know, there's something, um, it's, I've noticed it's just like, it seems to be an Amazon specific issue. I mean, other places have this issue, but like, if you've seen other Amazon shows, they literally all look exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Wheel of Time looks exactly the same as Rings of Power. The Boys looks pretty much the same, even though it's not even a fucking fantasy show. Well, yeah, there, um, was, a, remember... there was a tweet about this, wasn't there, where it's like, they had um, The Witcher, they had Rings of Power, they had Wheel of Time, and it was like just shots of everyone, and they all looked fucking identical. Well, uh, what I found weird, I don't know if you ever saw it, remember the title reveal for Rings of power and oh, everyone yeah. everyone yeah. thought it was cgi it turns out that was completely yeah. practical but there's just something that they fucked up that makes it look more fake than it actually My is assumption is they throw yeah. cg goo on everything it's like a weird yeah. filter where they think know. it looks better i thought up an ending for my book and he lived happily ever after that was such a bad way to start too. It represented that perfect because that sign ended up in Jeff Bezos's office. So he's like, hey, I'm going to make this red <laughs> sign. Let's just make it a promo because this is my giant vanity project. Goodbye, Gandalf. Goodbye, dear Bubba. The sort of like attitudes and everything that you'd have them say something like, you know, with the set dress and it's like, oh, we can ask the CG guys to put in some extra bits and bobs in the background. It's like, no, 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 you've already lost. You were supposed to want to do it. You were supposed to want to create all this stuff. Like, that's the spirit of, like, the whole thing. When they're coming up with, like, what's in Bilbo's room, you know that passionate people are like, well, what would he have in his room? What do we know he has in his room? And what do you need to see to represent this, that, the other? As opposed to, like, oh, problem? Get it to the CG guys. They could probably solve it. You ever see that clip where Jeff Bezos was talking about how his son was a Lord of the Rings fan and told him not to fuck it up? My son came up to me one day and he said, Dad, please don't F this up. I hope his son disowned him. <laughs> It feels like this era was like, oh yes, make it with love. But this 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 era where it currently was like, why don't we try hate? <laughs> no, this this era is like, I'm given this thing to make, and I'm actually I just want to make a completely different story that's mine, and I'm just gonna. I don't understand. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. And I'm just gonna. Well, port that into it. That's there too, and like apathy, but also there's that level. Some of the creators are like, you know, this IP I've been entrusted with. There's so much wrong with it that I can fix. It's like, yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. look at, look oh, at the man. fucking Witcher people, like openly mocking the books. You know, Tolkien didn't know what he was fucking talking about. Let me fix it. <laughs> Tolkien was problematic. So let's make something antithetical to everything that guy was about. Uh, uh, is that I think I forgot most oh, of Rings of Power, but I am. Oh, I love this. I, I, can't, I can't get out this of my head. This is where the bad guys live. Yep, time. this is definitely where the bad guys live. <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, I it would just be fantastic if this is where the goodies are based. It's like, <laughs> oh man, we need to get. We, we got a bad rap. <laughs> Hey, they just right, like really up. angular architecture, okay? Yeah. Yes. It's such a beautiful model, though. I love it. Look at this. Rad. Oh, the green. <laughs> I don't think a lot of that's to code, though. And this, it's like, calm down, film. I can only coom so many times in a row. I know, dude. Uh -oh, then yeah, then the nine come out, it's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because people watching that in the cinema who didn't know the books would have thought they were coming out of Baradur, but it's like a completely different city that they're they're coming out of. Year 34, 34 of the Second Age. Here follows the account of Sildo, High King of Gondor. They Plus are thing. covering Orgel. so much time here. They're covering yeah. almost two decades here. <laughs> yeah. I remember finding yeah. out about that when I was super young. I was like, what? It's like, yeah, what happens here? Gandalf fucks off for a long time. Yeah. It has come to me, the One Ring. It shall be an heirloom of my kingdom. Frodo leaves yeah. when he's fifty. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's like a solid thirty years between chapters. But it's an elegant way of of making yes. changes in a sort yeah. in source material that doesn't necessarily really have that much of an effect. But you have to understand how to do it well. It's precious to me, though I buy it with a great pain. Aquaman. Mortar was created in a day. The old man Waldreg stuck oh his God. sword and Waldreg, turned the lock I, and he I made will, Mordor. You know that as the years went on, Sauron killed everyone who knew that. He was like, no yeah, one will know was that this was started by some hobo. <laughs> And the more you find out about the ring wraiths, the more terrifying they are. One of my favorite things about fantasy in general are the monsters that you can get out of them. And the yeah. Nazgul are like the just Harfets. like my favorite. We still don't really know who the ring race. They were just kings of men. Not all of them were kings of men. Some of them might have been sorcerers too. But um, there is letters and stuff that one, there might be some former Numenorians in there. Yeah. Uh, and, again, and so uh, I, 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 yeah, and that's death. enough to know that they were great, yep. powerful leaders, sorcerers, the Witch King of Angmar, like great stuff. You just know that when Rings of Power t deals with this, they're going to be like a bunch of <laughs> what you're heading towards, Drinker. I imagine is like yeah, they'll be very or... selfish, very greedy leaders or something, and be like, yeah, see, they, they fell because be, they were flawed. They'll be small as well. They'll just seem small people. Yeah. And they want everything power. in that show seems small. It, it, well, that's the, that's the thing. This is the nuance of Lord of the Rings. A lot of people consider it a very simple story, but like I feel like a lot of this is telling us like very good people can have flaws that can lead to very dark paths if they're not, you know, stalwart sort of thing. But there's always a way back, that sort of stuff. Maybe they'll do the same thing that Shadow of War did and make a sealed or one of the Nazgul. That was cool. That was totally not infuriating at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, his character in Rings of Power was very confusing and contradictory. I completely forgot oh, Isildur right. was even in it. it Jesus. Yeah, oh, yeah. Isildur yeah, was in Rings did. of Power. Don't worry, Sam. Rosie knows an idiot when she sees one. Does she? <gasps> Is it secret? Is it safe? It is kind of insane if he had Frodo understand the full gravity of what's gonna happen. There are markings. It's some form of Elvish. I can't read it. And there are a few who can. I wonder if Frodo would have agreed. Listen, kid, enough. you're gonna get fucked up. One ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all. And in the darkness, find them. I think Frodo would have gone, even if he understood. Well, uh, that's the, that's the, who the, he is. In the books, you get a bit of this where he's like kind of yearning to get out into the world yes. and have an adventure, just like Bilbo did. You don't really yeah. see that here because there's not enough time. But but that might be the ring causing him yeah. to do that. The ring has awoken. It's heard its master's call. No one knows it's here, do they? Do they, Gandalf? Yeah, you can call this a key moment, a call to adventure. Oh, yeah. Well, but yeah, uh debatable. yes he, yes he, in the book he talks about i've been you know he's they, they take he's taking long walks talking to dwarves you must take it you cannot offer me this ring i'm giving it to you don't tempt me photo there's Between some that. really good stuff in terms of obviously that bit with bilbo earlier that made, gave you a sense that gandalf's powerful he's very old he's a fucking wizard but then also his fear of the ring so it puts you in a position of sort of respecting the ring if he respects it and its power. Mm -hmm. I would use this ring from a desire to do good, but through me, it would wield a power too great and terrible to imagine. You know, I didn't say this, but when they leave the boundaries, you know, this is as far as I've ever been. It's just a great shot right in a real environment. It, it's so simple, 
but you get it because the way the actors play it. If I take one more step, it'll be the farthest away from home I've ever been. Well, yeah, and it, it tells you so much about Sam and like what an insular life he's lived, and to some extent Frodo as well, because they've probably only been walking for like a couple of days. <laughs> it's like yeah. this is as far as I've ever gone. Yeah, and it's like a boundary you'd remember, but you've never felt like you've never it's needed to cross it. So yeah, and that was life for most people a hundred years ago, eighty yep. years ago. But it cannot stay in the Shire. No, no, it can't. You must leave and leave quickly. I'll be waiting for you at the inn of the Prancing Pony. Hobbits really are amazing creatures. And that's what Tolkien was on about. I mean, you know, World War I tore people away from where they lived their whole lives and sent them to, basically sent them to hell, sent them to Mordor. Confound it all, Samwise Gamgee! Have you been eavesdropping? I have been dropping no eaves, sir, honest. And throughout history, that's why people used to, you know, the peasants used to join the Lord's army and whatever, because that mm -hmm. was their chance to go somewhere. A little late for trimming the verge, don't you think? Well, Never too late to trim the verge. Ladies, what if you like a bit of the verge? A little bit of verge is all right. Don't turn me into anything unnatural. No, I've thought of a better use for you. Makes you wonder it's if funny, there were right? several is... hobbits out there, would Gandalf just be like, "You're all going to"? <laughs> yeah, you're all going to. The town no, drunk is there. He's like, "Yep, you." <laughs> Come along, Samwise. Keep up. The enemy has many spies in his service. Birds, beasts, never put it on. For the agents of the Dark Lord will be drawn to its power. Never put it on. Unless you want to go invisible. It's pretty neat. <laughs> Good luck! <laughs> anyway, bye! Hey, we get like I'll Eddie see you in Mordor. Ian, Ian McKellen killed it in this movie. He was robbed. He should have gotten an Academy Award. The ring is trying to get back to its master. It wants to be found. Every person who had even a finger involved in any of the creation of this should got an Oscar, right? All three On movies should have won, too. Look at him. Look at that. A real location. Beautiful. the edit where after this every time sam takes a step he says this is the first <laughs> <laughs> yeah in the videos like 17 hours long yeah. <laughs> it's like it's it's been it's been six months sam can you stop <laughs> i get it sam jesus if i take one more step it'll be the farthest away from home i've ever been if i take one more step Look at him already. Oh. oh. <laughs> My old friend, Saruman. And again, just the, st the story of how he wanted to be Gandalf, he even had the blessing to be Gandalf, but man. You are sure of this? Beyond any doubt. So the ring of power has been found. You're like the best Saruman possible. Oh, I like that he explicitly went up to Ian McKellen and told him that Tolkien told him that he could be <laughs> Gandalf. It's like, Mom said that I could play. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The love of a halfling's leaf has clearly slowed your mind. But we still have time. Ian McKellen's like, yes, but you're so good at playing evil bastards. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love this set. Yeah. So good. It's such a great spooky wizard uh, fortress. Oh, oh, I fucking love it. It really is. And look at the god rays, you know? The voluminous it, lighting. His gaze pierces cloud, shadow, earth, and flesh. This always reminds me as well, like seeing him here and like how, how focused and intense he is. It just reminds me of The Hobbit where like Christopher Lee is clearly oh, yeah. fading Aww. out and he just looks so plasticky and fake. Wait, wait, you didn't like the massive action sequence where Galadriel, Elrond, Elrond yeah. and Saruman are in the, the big epic action sequence fighting off all of the ghosty ring wraiths? No, that when, I loved. I honestly was waiting for him to go, it's wizard in time. And then he wizards all over I the back. Like yeah. that scene. I like that scene. I have special personal reasons for liking it. A great eye, lidless, wreathed in flame. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, but I was actually going to say the uh, what I liked about that scene as well. The dialogue. He's he's big enough, Sauron, hugely. Very soon he will have summoned an army great enough to launch an assault upon Middle Earth. And I think first time around you might be like, well, he says he's just trying to make the threat clear. And it's like, well, no, he's kind of on his team, but he's trying to already convince Gandalf. It's like this guy is pretty strong. We should probably. Oh. We do not know who else may be watching. <laughs> there it is. I love that yeah. shit and the realization. The nine 
have left Minas Morgul. They've reached the Shah. Have you seen that behind the scenes clip where uh, Chris Felice tried to walk down those stairs and he's like, Peter, I can't. I, can't. <laughs> I just, I can't. I'm, can't I'm gonna trip over. <laughs> Advise, persuade. I'm sorry, I cannot get up these goddamn steps smoothly. They will find the ring. And kill the one who carries it. You know what's funny? He's talking about how the, the Nine are heading to the Shire to find Frodo, and Gandalf's like, Jesus Christ, we gotta, we gotta go. In this, it's indicative that Saruman is not a good guy. In modern stuff, that would just been the dialogue. It's like, oh, why didn't mm -hmm. you tell me that earlier? But are you evil? <laughs> like... We must join with Sauron. Tell me, friend, when did Saruman the wise abandon reason for madness? See, this is where you want Gandalf to be like, oh, you're a little cuck. You've cucked out. Look at you. Cuck. That's right, you cuck. Oh, Saruman the cuck. Damn. <laughs> That's cheating. Spin, baby. <laughs> Spin did kind of make me laugh. You have elected the way of pain. Oh, the music. Oh, so good. You know. I saw this movie for the first time when I was like five or six, I think. And I always remembered years later that Isengard theme. Oh yeah. You know that da 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 dun dun dun. <laughs> Yeah, there's like, a lot of great yeah, motifs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've right. lived rent free in my head for years. It's a really good one, and they've got tons of those great light motifs throughout the soundtrack. Sam, we're still in the Shire. What could possibly happen? So, so much deliberate choices in the action and dialogue for introducing a character. Well, and the music as well. Well, really, basically all the filmmaking. A lot of the assumptions when people ask like favorite characters, the first thing that comes to mind might be a Gandalf and Aragorn, or Frodo, just the main character, maybe. But it's just like Merry and Pippin might be thought of as like, oh yeah, they're more comic relief. It's like the fucking stories those two have. I like that the movie can have little moments of light-hearted brevity like this before going it's into the creepy shit that happens in 45 seconds. Oh, it's a full package. It's one of the reasons why it's kind of easy to point to Lord of the Rings, like this trilogy is. What, what's a good way of like introducing films to somebody who's never seen a film before, however that manages to happen? <laughs> Lord of the Rings is like a really easy choice because it's so, it's so balanced, isn't it? A shortcut. A shortcut to what? The mushrooms. On the one hand, absolutely. On the other, maybe don't show them this yet, because it'll spoil the, the other films. Well, yeah, 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 set their expectations too high. It's like, oh man, this was so great. What, what other Lord of the Rings things can I watch? Having watched this in some of my most formative years, the assumption at the time was that film is incredible, imagine where we'll go. Mm -hmm. And then it, it sort of became like, that was great. Let's watch it again. <laughs> yeah, which isn't so bad. I mean, we talk about oh. how we're in one of the insanest and unluckiest timelines ever for, you know, the amount of franchises that have been burned down, but we lucked out huge with this set of movies. The other timelines yeah. don't get to have this. Well, we at least got to see how good they can be, and like, there's people who are growing up now who are going to assume that that's the standard of movie making, like the garbage that we have to put up with today. That shot with the Nazgul oh. over uh, the Hobbit's so good. I love that shot that shows that like there's fucking nails inside that horse's hoof. It doesn't draw a lot of attention to the little things yeah. in the costume design, but you yeah, can but you notice them. Um... Now it's conspicuous. You've ruined it forever. No, he's accentuated it, and it's wonderful and beautiful and amazing. And when Ooh. I was a kid. I actually thought that those bugs were coming out of the Nazgul. That would be disturbing. Be what was that? I remember like the watching the director's man. commentary for this, and like their thinking was like this: this presence of this thing just drives out yeah. life in all its forms. Like they want to get out of the ground because like it, the energy of this thing's just infected it. It's so interesting to think about all of the techniques that, you know, the purpose is to be invisible, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's presence is apparent, right? Like the magnets underneath the floor when the ring hits the ground to make it feel like a heavy burden's been dropped. 
Because it's the size of a dinner plate, right? The, <laughs> the, the one, like, in the snow. I wonder if they made a giant hand for that giant ring. Well, what was it's, cool about, oh, like, the gorgeous. production of this is, like, almost the entire trilogy was fully storyboarded before they started filming. So they planned out a ton of these shots well before they actually got out what? any cameras. Why do that? Why that? can't you just spontaneously Meanwhile, now, grab shots? Like, oh, yeah, no, we haven't finished the script, and I have no idea where this story is leading. I don't know what everybody else is doing. <laughs> I imagine storyboarding it out really helped with the CGI in this movie too, because I've heard from like, especially people who work on the CGI for Marvel movies right now, they don't bring the CGI artists on the set to actually look at shit. Mm. Yeah, and I, when you I don't do that and you and you make like shots and then you just assume that the CGI artist can work around that, you, you got like this mess on screen that could just be fixed if you storyboarded it out and had people who knew what they were doing around. <laughs> A lot of these early films, because visual effects were still new, it was like a part of the process that had to be integrated. Like it was necessary that it was integrated into a lot of the other. Yeah, like know, a lot of the filmmaking. a lot of the attitudes and formats for creation were stuff they did out of necessity, and have since become yes. something that they should strive to do because it had such great results. Whereas now, it's just like, well, yeah, I mean, we can use the computers to achieve a lot of things. Like, it's just a ubiquitous thing that's available and present. But without that, like, foresight and planning and, like, all of those attempts while actually filming to make sure that everything is laid out to make the task easier to get better results, then you get stuff like fucking Marvel movies where everything looks awful when there's really no reason that it should look that bad. I do like how he's got a, a separate looking hole just yeah. specifically for Hobbits. <laughs> yeah, that's that's great. a great little detail. <laughs> World building. What a quaint little village. Oh, I hope nothing bad happens here. It's the gradual intrusion of the real world into the Shire as well. Like, it's still got some of the look and feel of the Shire, but it's bigger and it's more sinister. Definitely you know, but it's... different now. Well yeah, well, something like, and we're moving through the world. Yeah, the adventure's begun. Something that's a bit more explicit in the book, but is alluded to a couple times in the movies, is that there's people like further east you go that just straight up don't even know what a hobbit is because yeah. they haven't yeah. been around for very long so it's also them just like realizing what the world really is like beyond the safety of the shire it's like the real world the further east you go the less people know about hobbits thought that was funny didn't you that fellow's done nothing but stare at you since we arrived What's, uh, hey, law experts, what's Grandalf Greyhaim? Is that like a surname? It's one of his many names. Mmm. So greedy, he had to have more than one name, huh? Stormcrow, Thrandy, he's got a bunch of names. This is when he does Bill, something Adam, horrifying, Steve, and so he gets a new alias. Yep. It's like, that was Oh, look at that little ferret. That was the Stormcrow guy. That, I, I wasn't, I didn't do that. He's one of them rangers. The dangerous folk they are, one in the wild. Round here. Strider. I saw a really funny Photoshop where Pippin's over at the bar and he's like, yeah, that's Frodo and all the people around him are the Nazgul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need that conversation. It's like, where, where, what are you looking for? And it's like, oh, man. He's like, all right, he's like, yeah, no, no problem. Like Viggo Mortensen was heavily into this, right? He was gonna make this work no matter what. Super passionate. I think he essentially is Aragorn. Like that's just how he lives. <laughs> like he well, he went around the set. He carried his sword with him everywhere. I like the videos of him. Like they they hit cut and he's like running off to go fishing before they film the next scene. <laughs> Baggins. Sure, I know a Baggins. He's over there. Frodo Baggins. You fucking idiot. Over there, Frodo Baggins. Oh, he's got this very interesting gold ring that he carries with him everywhere. <laughs> all the time. Steady on, he says it talks to him and it turns him invisible. You gotta wonder how many of them are wondering, like, is that a hobbit thing? They can just go invisible? Do they just go and yeah, <laughs> is that just a power that they have? No wonder we've never, we don't know what they are. <laughs> I, I love the slowed down, like, neigh that horse makes when they realize that the ring's being used. Mm. Yeah. It's just really creepy sounding. I see you. I see you. 
Oh, look at it. You know, Sauron, you don't come across as very no chill and happy. He needs to read, like, How to Win Friends and Influence People. <laughs> yeah. <no> <laughs> what do you want? A little more caution from you. That is no trinket you carry. I carry nothing. Develop his he's talking to, like, a skill. therapist about it. He's like, I present myself as a huge fire right, Aga bull. I, I'm just is imagining him, like, as the big flaming bull sitting on a chair, you know, <laughs> sitting laying down on the psychologist's couch, <laughs> which is a regular guy. Are you frightened? Yes. Not nearly frightened enough. I know what hunts you. You know, they have the back and forth for a while. The therapist's like, you choose to look like this? And he's like, is something wrong with how I look? No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. I've been told I look lovely. Right? 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 Really? Really? Goals, totally perfectly fine. I'm considered no, handsome in my culture. Let it go! I'll have you, long shanks! I like how he's got his sword ready before they even get in the door. Aragorn will fuck you up. I brought, I brought the candles. That's the I'll kind of shit that waxing. I always love to see in media is when characters have an overt reputation. You can see them doing... Oh. <laughs> the strong characteristics given to characters really quickly in action scenes, like Sam leading the charge there and ha having his fists out against a guy with, with a sword. It just becomes so clear how much he cares about Frodo. Oh, people can die. Maybe the mud is so soft that he's perfectly fine. Fine, yeah. We need a stinger of him, like, crawling out from under <laughs> the door. Or, like, he just punch, punches through the door. <laughs> Bloody yeah. Nazgul every time. <laughs> you just hear a knocking from the other side and a muffled. <laughs> oh, that, that shot with Butterbur, though, with the, yeah. with the Nazgul and their knives. God, that's so good. Love it the way they like flow. They're so mad. They're molding. They're molting. They're molting. Now I'm just imagining a Nazgul getting on the ground and doing the worm like X2C. <laughs> <laughs> Though I will say, if we I were cool. Aragorn and the rest, I'd be like, do we need to get the fuck out of here right now? <laughs> like, are they when coming? You feel the presence of the ring drawn to the power of the one. They will never stop hunting you. Aragorn's rep and attitude match that of a really, like, great warrior and everything. And you do see him fight individual fights, but it's just the, the boss ones that I like that really sells the skill. I think a servant of the enemy would look fairer. Feel fouler. It's foul enough. I'm really looking forward to Amon Hand. It's like one of my big highlights of the um, whole trilogy. Oh, yeah. I remember seeing that as a kid when he, like, goes out to meet the horde of orcs and, like, raising his sword. And I was like, I want to do that when I grow up. And fuck, was I disappointed when I found out you can't do that. Oh, damn it. Where is he leading us? Rivendell, Master Gamji. The House of Elrond. There was a show and tell in my school and a friend of mine in year four. He was just going to do show and tell Lord of the Rings. Simple as that. And be like, Lord of the Rings is great. I love Lord of the Rings. Now let's watch some Lord of the Rings as part of my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> be like, great. And it was Abbott Head is what he, he showed. And when it got to the Lurtz fight, uh, one of the girls started crying and we had to turn it off. And I hated her. Did a beat her Weak. up after school. What about second breakfast? I think he knows about second breakfast, Pip. It's so funny because, like, I think it would be consistent statistically that guys just fucking love watching, like, a warrior destroy the fuck out of a demon. Well, a lot of he girls would be like, up. ah, the spooky Expect demon. What about Elevensies? Luncheon, afternoon tea, dinner, supper. He knows about them, doesn't he? Wouldn't count on it. It never even registered me to me as scary, you know, Aragorn versus Lutz. It was just, like... No, it's just, like, that's like, by that point, you just want to see him destroy the shit out of that orc. Uruk-hai, you racist. They all look the same to me, Oh, Morgan. my God. <laughs> Oh, no. That's another great example. John Reese davies is like fucking Gimli is an insane almost idea in your head, but then it works like perfectly. Such a great casting for Gimli, even though you'd be like, why would you cast someone who is basically the opposite height? I like that they used scenes like this just to integrate mm -hmm. like little moments of the lore. Yep. Like it's not really relevant. Well, it's a little bit relevant to the plot. It just helps flesh out the world a little bit more, even if you don't necessarily need to know the story of Baron and Luthien. Mm -hmm. Which just a little goes a long way, doesn't it? It gives it uh, much more like a sense of being yeah. like a bigger place than what you see. Just because this is what we're seeing doesn't mean that this is the bounds of this world. So wrong. I want to plant here. The medieval telephones. Yeah. Look at that eye. Oh, it looks so good, though. <laughs>
Yeah, no, I know. It's, but again, it's a stunning the, it would be like, oh, it's the CG. Uh, you incorporate correctly there. It's like, yeah, you wouldn't be able to probably do a practical orb that has the eye and he does all the swirling. Build me an army worthy of I like that Saruman looked really fucked up after that conversation. With, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, presumably, out. is that because he's, he knows Sauron now the full is... scope of the plan, so to speak? Well, I think it's just really mentally overwhelming just to be exposed to that. We have work to do. Do you remember what it does to uh, Pippin uh, yeah, yeah, later yeah. on? Yeah. Right? Yeah. He just touches it for a little bit and he's like, oh shit. He can't even pull away. Well, I always found the interesting it, part is Aragorn touches it for like a second, right? And he's like knocked out yeah. almost. Yeah. Rip them all down. Rip them all down. Destroying nature. I know, obvious, but still something I just want to acknowledge is like the soundtrack reflects like the naturalistic sort of elements with the Shire and then with the, the bad guys very much clanking metal. Well, yeah, Isengard obviously that, uh, represents that as like an industrial version yeah, yeah. of, of well, and And some of world. it is like them actually using chains. It's got that tin, 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 before like the brass comes in, and that's like all. Oh. Put it out, you fools! Some of this stuff is actually hard to compliment because you take it for granted sometimes. But like the way the the orcs look are incredible. All the orcs in a row. Yeah, they're all like, oh, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. makeup and oh, the, the effect. It looks incredible. amazing. You get smacked with it all at once. You just sort of just like, yeah, this is all amazing. More, please. <laughs> These are for you. Keep them close. No one thought it conspicuous that Aragorn just had a bunch of hobbit-sized swords. Like he was purposely trying to create a little army of soldiers. <laughs> I guess in the book you get more from this, like they actually get them from a, a little adventure that they go on. There's a whole thing where they have to fight like um, barrel whites, like these like yeah, undead the, creatures, the down. which is kind of cool, but it does have Tom Bombadil in it as well. So Do when yeah. You're... When you're one of the I mean, Nazgul they... at this point, you're like, do you think this is unfair? <laughs> <laughs> they jumped over Frodo selling his house, moving to Buckland, Barrow Downs, Tom Bombadil, a bunch of stuff. Do you think of that? Uh, it's stuff like that that made the fans, when first seeing this, a bit apprehensive about praising it. <laughs> I know some people were still like on edge about whether or not this was a great adaptation. I think there was an acknowledgement like they were going to have to cut some stuff. Like, there was no way they could fit all of yeah, this like, in. Yeah, like, the whole Tom Bombadil chapter has basically fuck all to do with literally yeah. anything in that whole trilogy. Like, there's a point where at the end of Two Towers, in the book it's paced a little bit differently, because at the end of Two Towers is when F Sam and Frodo are in Shelob's lair. Sam has a line where he's like, man, I wish Tom was here. And I had to, like, take a moment to be like, who the fuck is Tom? <laughs> <laughs> I love when you get this glimpse of them. And I also so see this freaky. as like, give it to me and this will be chill, okay? And then he's like, no. And he's like, all right, fuck you then. And this Aragorn guy ruins it. I love that this is the first scene Viggo Mortensen oh, did. Look at it. The first of many times where Frodo is injured and screaming. I love that one. Yeah. Just went fuck this about. <laughs> like, I'm yeah. this. Go jump in the swamp, guys. Also, this always confused me. How did he get lost? The Nazgul. He was looking around like, "What's going on?" <laughs> it's like it's just Maybe you and like, Aragorn, man. Guys, are we like, are we leaving? Are we not? It, are, are we? Staying? And you know that I that, that like, um, the torch is still sticking out that of his went, face. That like, went through one of the skull eye holes. It stuck right in. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, the transition of the music is so awesome. 
All right, Gandalf, get oh. back in the game, bud. I like how that moth was just minding its own business, and now he's being sent on a rescue mission. You're gonna save Middle Earth, little guy. Little <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like, fly. help me you, out, get the eagles. To travel, you need me to travel how far? I don't think I'm equipped for this. We well, just I'm explains the whole plan to him, the moth just goes, no. Are there any lamps where I'm going? Uh, boy, I do love lamps. I love lamp. Do you really love lamp, or are you just saying you love lamp? <laughs> I actually no, watched that recently. Love fucking love that movie. It's so good. Are they making the crusty burger rib witch? In what? Mordor? I don't think so. Oh, but I, 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 you got <laughs> like a rib. It tastes like liberty. We start with authentic letter grated meat and process the hell out of it. Mm, I don't mind the taste. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the clean answer is no, Friggy, they are not, but yeah. <laughs> this is the Krusty Burger Ribwick. Alright, calm down. If he kills that guy, Sarwa's gonna be like, that's your breakfast now, by the way. We're not wasting a single thing here. That was yep. your dad. That was your father. <laughs> you killed him. I will call you Rupert. It's great, like, <laughs> they, these things have literally just been born, and they, like, shove them into armor and give them swords. Dude, they're, did, well, they're born, like, like where's a war? Give me a like... war right now. Let's go. <laughs> is he going to die? He's passing into the Shadow world. I mean, that is not the kind of thing you want to hear when you say, is he going to die? The response, he's heading to the no, shadow no, no, world. He's, like, he's oh god. Into... Are you the is lamp the great moth spoke of? <laughs> the great moth? She's like, yeah, 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 I'm friends with the great moth, yeah. He's just like, if you, I'll take anything at this point. I don't know what's happening. Are you, are you fucking real or am I just like, oh my, oh god. my god. I'm in the shadow world. He mentioned the shadow Is this world. The shadow <laughs> we must get him to my father. There are five wraiths behind you. I was just thinking about what you said earlier, Moller, about how, like, Liv Tyler's not really known as an actress necessarily, but like, that sort of makes her perfect for a role like this, where she kind of seems um, spaced out anyway. Where the other four are, I do not know. One oh, might God, describe Liv Tyler and Orlando Bloom as actors paralyzed to some extent. And that can be helpful when playing an elf because they are very uh, stoic to an extent. Yes. This scene Shake is important, by the way, because if you're one of these Nazgul, you very likely were recently set on fire, so that's annoying, and you're about to be drowned. Yeah. The little shit that got Kevin on fire. <laughs> Kevin's in <laughs> the back like, I st it still hurts, guys. <laughs> He's wearing one of their spare cloaks, and it's like white. <laughs> like one of the Nazgul is just like smoking, yeah, there's a smoke trail behind him. <laughs> <laughs> like, they, like there's still steam coming out of his face. Yeah. <laughs> Quiet, quiet just makes everything better, I'm just saying. That's a good trivia question. What's mm. Arwen's horse's name? Rumsfeld. It's supposed to be Glorfindel. That's a California name. You know, like, Nazgul is one of the coolest fucking names in fantasy. Glorfindel is, is not as cool. It's not. It's a little, it's a little... Uh, okay. Well, Glorfindel's there's... the name of the, the goofy elf. The <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> elf. elf. Uh, Tolkien did make literally the funniest name ever written in the history of fantasy. Which one? Teleporno. Teleporno. <laughs> <laughs> I, I shit you not, that's a real- I, I think that's like- That's what I do like four hours a day, uh, teleporno. That- I love that name. <laughs> teleporno is amazing. Is it a spell? Was a, <laughs> Tolkien was a visionary. She took all of Glorfindel's action. change I'm actually okay with because she has like yeah. no characterization whatsoever in the books. I think she only None. appears in like one page of Fellowship and like a couple pages in Return of the King and that's it. Whereas Glorfindel basically is only relevant for the this one chapter. I'd rather have more development for someone that Aragorn is attached to so we get more for him than have Glorfindel who oh, isn't gets relevant. Oh, set on fire. No, oh, that, well, that would have well, been a tough I shot. Would, I, I recall a certain OneRing.net site in their in their forums bitching like hell about how much Arwen was in this, and to see them two decades later completely <laughs> back Rings of Power was just glorious. We used to yeah, hate women openly back now. then. Last to me, to the 
here's the worst shot in the whole trilogy. <laughs> what, what the fuck were they thinking with this one? <laughs> it's ethereal. It's not ethereal, it's retarded. I love this movie, but that's a horrifically bad shot. Even the Frodo one looks awkward. Like, it looks like you could do it in your own editing thing yeah, pretty quick. The Elrond one is hilarious. <laughs> the, the, the Elrond one looks like the <laughs> beginnings of a horrible fever dream. Gandalf. Yes, I'm here. And you're lucky to be here, too. Oh, new location already looks so distinct and awesome. Look at it. Oh, so candles lit. <laughs> it's not necessary, Gandalf. Oh, it's, it's, it's moody. What happened, Gandalf? Why didn't you meet us? Oh, I'm sorry, Frodo. It is serene, isn't it? <laughs> like, oh, you, you want to wake up here. This is good there. stuff. It really is such a sharp contrast between all of the locations. And, you know, this is... <laughs> We're only like a very short way into the total adventure, and there's still plenty more variety. Yeah, left. we're not even oh, a not sixth enough. of the way through this, the, the, the oh. whole story. The main plot hasn't technically happened yet. The friendship of Sodom is not lightly thrown aside. You just said a friendship with Sauron is not lightly thrown Blanking. aside. He's like, we are still friends, right? Like, I know you don't want to fight with Sauron and everything, but we're friends. Embrace the power of the ring, or embrace your own destruction. <laughs> You unfollowed me on me. Twitter, Gandalf. Why? There is only one Lord of the Ring, and he does not share power. Oh, such a good line. Mm. What you want when you got a one-liner to a villain is something you know is going to sit in the back of their head. Exactly. Something that they're going to stew on. Sauron would never betray me. I'm really cool. So you have chosen death. And then you just need that moment of Sauron being like, don't listen to that Gandalf guy. You can trust me. Yeah. Look at these mountains. Oh, here. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's it is fascinating to screen. think about how much of like New Zealand as a country, like globally, is defined by this film series. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, I mean, it really it, is like a huge aspect of how they're under, like known around the world. I mean, was this the first movie to really make use of New Zealand as a filming location? Um, like first high profile. Probably one. not the first. It's it certainly be, high profile. Yeah. It, it yeah. was yeah, super high profile. Some oh, of their leaders. so fucking good. Yeah, I want to so go there. Amazing. It looks like <laughs> a painting come to life. A, a movie made more than 20 years ago, and it looks this good. It's yeah. stunning. Part of it, right, is that the quest, there's an assumption that, like, we've done it. We've reached the end. Yep. I was like, duh. Well, that was a really great hour and a half long movie. Oldman plot really hole. Plot player. hole. He did not look like that earlier. Plot hole. He also wrote the book. It wasn't written before. Now it written is. Okay. Now it written is. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like that, that brain hole right there. <laughs> that age, it seems, has finally caught up with me. I'm not like you, Bilbo. My dear boy. Ian Holm, legend. Oh, dude. Nailed casting again. Played Frodo in the BBC radio series, which is excellent if you haven't heard it he was able to cameo in the hobbit uh films as well wasn't he that was the last on-screen performance from him it's part of the tragedy he... uh is that that those films they had all of the material to be great but they didn't uh it didn't quite make it there packed already no harm in being prepared I thought you wanted to see the old sam i do more than anything i did yeah, the script was and just it was, really bad. And it was really the last time that the actors were still young enough or alive enough to play these roles. We did what Gandalf wanted, didn't we? The ring will be safe in Rivendell. I am ready to go home. Someone probably ought to sweep those leaves. It's um, no, it's character great. building. For the yeah, it is way. character the leaves, building in yeah. a sense, but... They did. It's metaphorical. <laughs> they just a keep coming back. Damn it. Maybe the they, they do it in the morning and they just sort of accumulate. Yeah, they... There's my boy. Oh, oh, there he is. There he is. The time of the elves is over. My people are leaving these shores. It is in men that we must place our hope. The second best character in the whole trilogy. He's number one. Wait, Gary, who's I your number one? Say it in. Four mirrors up there, though. Rags, your number one is. Can I put both of the brothers together? No, you uh, have to pick Bormir one. Fer um, I'm gonna. I gotta go with Teleporno. Uh huh. The race of men is failing. The blood of Numenor is all but spent. 
pride and dignity forgotten. Drinker, what about you? Well, the interest in not just saying Boromir like everyone else, I think he's going to... Um, I'm going to say Sam. Is the, he is Good. the MVP yep. of this movie. Bring I'm, I'm kind of on the same page. I'm, it's a toss-up for me between Boromir and Sam. Oh, I might go with Sam. I was there the day the strength of men failed. Cast it into the fire! Destroy it! No. And Wolf. I, I'm sorry, are we going our favorite character or who we think is the best character? Because I got different Go favorite. Aragorn. What's your answer for best? Boromir. Wait a minute. Okay. Oh, yeah. So Gandalf favorite, they had him best. My favorite and what I think is the best is still Boromir. <laughs> There's no strength left in the world of men. That is one who could unite them. There's so much to say about all of them and the incredible work that's done to detail them all and all the actions they take are so important. If anyone said like, oh, my favorite character is Mary or Pippin, I'd be like, yep, makes sense. Sure. Mm -hmm. Gimli, of there course. Many, many, I, I would many, say many, if someone many. said Legolas, I'd be like, huh, okay. Oh, a lot of, a lot of women would say that. <laughs> I mean, Gollum, that, you know? <laughs> Gollum, Gollum. Gollum. You do Gollum, wonder who would pick guys, Gollum. There's, there's, there's reason to pick him for sure. Gollum's He's, um... like legitimately really good character. Yeah. yeah. I He's know got... a meth head who would like Gollum. Not exactly. for the right reasons. Hell but, yeah. You know. No, no. Hey, hey, right here. Gollum is addiction, like personified in a character. Absolutely. Who are you? I am friend to Gandalf the Grey. Blade cut the ring. Sauron's and Andy Serkis I mean, is... Yeah, it's, it's dude, set the stage so for... He's Absolutely, so yeah. Reliable. Have you ever seen an Andy Serkis performance where you went, that wasn't very good? Nope. He always, no, he always no. gives it 100%. I'll yeah, say that yeah. for him. It's that yeah. total commitment to the role. Because um, it's the same with like a lot of his motion capture roles, like Caesar as well. Okay, we'll get there, yeah. but the performance is <laughs> fucking incredible. I'm more than a broken man. He also did a really fucking incredibly good job on the re-recordings for the audiobooks for The yes. Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. He really commits to Treebeard to the point that the chapter takes two fucking hours to go through because he talks that slowly. You are a sealed door's heir, not a sealed door himself. You are not bound to his fate. Is the Silmarillion audiobook out yet? Because I feel like that's the only way I'm actually going to be able to get through the whole thing. Uh, yeah, I think it is. I'll have to give that a shot. Because I've tried to read it and I just find it kind of boring to read. I respect it as a piece, but, you know, it's just not fun. Is it, it's more it. of a lore book, uh, right? Or? It's a history book about fake things, which is fine, yeah. but it's not I very do. fun to stuff read. In it is, some of the stuff is epic. Like absolutely epic, but it's it's uh it's just you it's told to you as opposed to shown to you for yeah, a lot yeah. of it. Which is fine for what it is. It's just not something that I personally find very interesting to read. You will face the same evil and you will I can't believe as well that this nope. era was also around about the time where you got the best licensed games for movies. There was a lot of cool licensed games in yeah. the 2000s. There was plenty Even of shit. Rings Game Boy games was. were fire. It's, it's, it's crazy because um, looking back, like the amount of effort they put into the Lord of the Rings ones for like intertwining clips from the movies, recreating the scenes from the movies into the games to then stitch the scenes together to create a narrative, a mechanical like system to approach and then have it be a satisfying game for fans was fucking crazy. And you think about it, it's like, we lost that and there wasn't it before. It's like that was just a little point in time where you, whatever movies really were coming out, lot. got to have that. Yeah, that. That's just not a thing that happens anymore. Well, uh, anything really licensed lot. for like film connection, like that Marvel's Avengers game, if you count that uh, or whatever, it's like that was a fucking disaster to the point where it's, it's not even available anymore, right? I guess that company in bankruptcy. Back, yeah, crazy. Cost the God, it was some ridiculous amount of money. I choose a mortal life. Strangers from distant lands, friends of old. You've been summoned here to answer the threat of Mordor. I yeah, they kind of start. The other ones, yeah. It's so good. Yeah. There's so much to read so into as well in terms so of what every, what's being told to you by everyone's expressions and the few lines yes. everyone gets to speak. Yep. You will unite or you will fall. Each race is bound to this fate, this one doom. This scene is incredibly expeditious in terms of building character because we got a lot of new faces as well. Yeah. And if it New was like faces, by the end of it, we got a really faces good set that hate each other. Oh, yeah. A bunch of world building as well. Sudius Bane is found. Oh, poor Boromir. Poor Boromir. Way of the world on his shoulders. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then that's it. Yeah. That's uh, Elrond being like, he's not going to touch it, right? And Gandalf's like, no, no. 
Yeah, you want that shit in where you live? Don't think so. Every corner of the West. By the blood of our people, are your lands kept safe? Give Gondor the weapon of the enemy. Let us use it against him. Did you not catch the part where it's evil, Baromir? Evil. <laughs> One ring answers to Sauron alone. What would a ranger know of this matter? He is Aragorn. You owe him your allegiance. Look at that, Which the first Legolas bro so moment. And like, oh, the resentment Boromir has for Aragorn is just all Denethor. Mm -hmm. This is Isildur's heir. Heir to the throne of Gondor. Gondor has no king. Remember when they made him a cunt in the Hobbit movies? He was weird in the Hobbit movies, Legolas. yeah. Legolas is mm. weird. He was in a love triangle. What the yeah. fuck is- why would you make a love triangle? With a yeah, dwarf. Like, <laughs> with... <laughs> what a terrible decision. Yeah, terrible, Dad. terrible decision. Aragorn is right. We cannot use it. The ring must be destroyed. I do like the- there's a lot of characters uh, who don't understand what's difficult about destroying it, so they're just well, like- Well, yeah, Gimli just, just like, goes straight up. in. What are we waiting for? <laughs> uh, let's do it. I love how at the end of this scene, he's like, you have my axe, and it's like, your axe is currently in pieces. <laughs> he's got yeah, several he's axes. Well. Cares, you have my other axe. Brings... Like, but that would have sounded awkward if he said, my other axe, so he just that assumed was... that people understood he had more than one wolf. Exactly, my wolf. My spare axe. In the games, when you play as Lego, Legolas and Aragorn, you obviously have the quiver with all the arrows for your ranged weapon. With Gimli, you have throwing axes, and it's like, how do you have 30 of those, dude? Like, where are you holding all that? In his beard. <laughs> yeah. In his beard. It must be taken deep into Mordor and cast back into the fiery chasm from whence it came. One does not simply walk into Mordor. Oh. Uh, the birth of a classic meme. Yeah. The ring must be destroyed. And I suppose you think you're the one to do it. I will be dead before I see the ring in the hands of an elf. I mean, we could I be win. funny about it, but yeah. it's like that's the foundation for a really great arc. Him hated Legolas, you know, them too. I fucking love their bromance over the three movies. It's great. <laughs> You know, I didn't read the books until much later, so I always assumed that Gimli and Legolas's game of counting how many orcs they killed was just an invention from the movie, and then yeah. it's like, no, that really was wasn't there. The I will take it! Oh, I love this expression. So Look much at it. to be gleaned from it. I will help you bear this burden, Frodo Baggins. You have my soul. I just love this as like a, as a beat, you know, this little hobbit. This little shit. Just bravely embarking on this quest. And you have my bow. And my axe. Well, and I think part of why it's so agreeable for a lot of people is that nobody sees like a distinct agenda for him. It's like, no, he's holding it's it. It's very pure. Yeah. He just wants to help people and save the world, save his home. Aragorn's like, yeah, that works. Yeah. Okay, the face of his all little one. This is indeed the will of the council, and Gondor will see it done. Yeah, I think it would have been really easy for this scene to come across as really contrived and like, oh, isn't it convenient that Frodo happens to be the one that gets chosen to do it, and everyone just falls in line, but like, the way it's played out, it all just flows really nicely. You know that there it was really a, does. There was a character that wanted to join the team, but he only had an axe and a sword, so he was like, so you have my, uh, uh, ah, fuck it. <laughs> I guess I won't join. <laughs> Mr. Frodo's not going anywhere without me. Maybe one of them stands up to go join, and one of his buddies is like, sit the fuck back down. Dude, I'd be tempted yeah. to join this team just because they seem like such a ragtag group. It's like, this will be fun. It is. <laughs> We're coming too! <laughs> These two are just being like, yeah, no, we're, we're always loved that expression. expression. That expression, yeah. 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 <laughs> He's like, uh, what the fuck are these? He had no idea that there here. was any more than two hobbits here. <laughs> yeah. I'm companion. So be it. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Hmm. Sort of uh, mission. Quest. You shall be the fellowship of the ring. I view it as a like I know it sounds silly, but as a trilogy in that like this to me is like, oh yes, we've got the thrust now. Right. Where are we going? 
And this is where which, the first disc ends. Which is interesting considering that, you know, it's like, how far are we? Oh, like nearly two hours. But it doesn't uh, feel like it, does it? I mean, yeah. people like complain about the pacing of them sometimes, but I just I think they're fucking perfect. No. I can't well believe that people throw such a fit over how long the ending of Return of the King is. And it's like, it's really not long at all. It's the not. the big it's key perfect. to it is look at the ending's length compared to the story, which is enormous. I think it's like 20 minutes on the dot. Pretty much. Which is fine. Yeah. This trilogy is now the the length of your average series on Disney Plus or mm -hmm. Amazon, and it does so much more with its time. Oh god, yeah. Uh, the ending is perfect. In her heart, your mother knew you'd be hunted all your life. That you'd never escape your fate. Well, I mean, you know, like the 20 minutes of, of this film is equivalent to the total content of Ahsoka. Yes. <laughs> And next season, too, if there is one. Yeah. Uh, the skill of the elves can reforge the Sword of Kings, but only you have the power to wield it. There are certain frames in this that have more content than all of Ahsoka. I mean, <laughs> arguably, yeah. Well, the shot of them all together as a fellowship, I feel like that's already yeah. more. I do not want that power. I have never wanted it. It's hard not to be funny about it, but it's a seriously sad moment what happens here. It is. My old sword, Sting. Here, take it, take it. It's funny that you say that a girl got scared by the Lurtz fight when this is like the one part of the movie yeah, where I think is... it's legitimately okay to be freaked out. Yes, by yes, this oh, is yeah. actually yeah. the jump scare that I, th I would have thought scared me when I first saw this for sure. It does, it does really come out of nowhere. Neithril, as light as a feather and as hard as dragon scales. I was like five when oh, I yeah. saw it. I was like, holy yeah. fuck. Well, it's good that they had a, a horror director essentially do this. I own ring. I sh should very much like to hold it again. I mean, I'm glad he didn't go like full brain dead with it. Especially in Moria, you you get that the, the gore comes in. It's like, oh, there it is. There's Peter Jackson's specialty at that point. Yep. But yeah, it really is tragic, isn't it? Yeah. Um, just, yeah, you're never free of it. And they're both recognizing what's happening here. I'm sorry I brought this upon you, my boy. I'm sorry that you must carry this burden. And that's Frodo's possible future. Yep. Mm. It, it never lets go of you, even if it's gone. There's always going to be a piece of it there. There's so much happening, but one of the aspects is his sadness knowing that Frodo has to do that now. I'm sorry for everything. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. To go through it. it's, it's been yeah. it's been emphasized with like a few beats already. This is a heavy, heavy burden. Yeah, and uh, you know, across the all the knowledge of Lord of the Rings lore of everything, like Bilbo is a fucking strong, resilient character. Absolutely. And Frodo putting his hand on his shoulder, and that that reaction yeah. was so good. Yeah. The ring bearer is setting out on the quest of Mount Doom. No oath nor bond is laid to go further than you will. See, it's interesting because in the book, he hasn't aged yet. So he's still as he was when he left the Shire. And he's initially geared up and ready to go. Like, he wants to be the one to carry the ring to, yep. to Mordor. And they have to, like, convince him not to. It's like, no, you've passed it on now. It's got, it's got a new bearer and you can't handle this now. May the blessings of elves and men free folk go with you i think that would have been a great scene as well but uh obviously i love mm -hmm. what they did oh we well, will someday I'll... when they remake it make no it to a streaming series. never touch <laughs> these i feel like that the world would fucking vomit if they remade these oh, oh, Gandalf. is it left or right left i really for... like frodo asking for directions there's yeah, especially great. with our you know our kind of protagonist characters especially nowadays they're just so fucking good at everything they're so yeah incredible and even this little scene here looking at each other last time before they it depart but... again like the lord of the rings is a good uh story to point to in terms of i guess um excellent execution of i guess more archetypal like storytelling elements <laughs> Like a team brought together with all of their disparate skills, growing over the course of the adventure, learning to trust each other, learning from each other. It's like such a, you know, normal kind of thing to see well, yeah, in a story. In a more, really to well. get like slightly meta then, it's like you wish these movies worked as a blueprint for everyone else to build off of instead of just coming back to it all the time being like, 
Why can't they do it like this? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, why can't they just achieve something that should be normal? It's fucking shot. With this music, too. Ugh. The money shot. Is that a kazoo? No, I'm just humming. Oh, I got a kazoo. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd like to get a kazoo. We must hold this course west of the Misty Mountains for 40 days. If our luck holds, the gap of Rhone will still be open to us. <laughs> this is Wolf trying to oh, find a way to announce his kazoo. <laughs> Beautiful. He's trying to fit it in. He's been waiting. He's like, this is vampire. my chance. Uh, Freaking like, clearly you know, used a kazoo. My kazoo. <laughs> uh, it sounded like a kazoo from my end, but I forgot your mic is also just I don't like wanna that. Your that mic is fun. just like uh, that. It turns east to Mordor. Two, one, five. Good. Very good. This is where, in our first yeah, this trilogy, great. myself, okay. Rags of Wolf pointed out that Merry and Pippin received more training than Ray. Ah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> they literally do. <laughs> Move your feet. Thanks. Faster. There's a lot of great things to point out in this scene. Uh, Boromir is teaching them how to fight on the defensive. He's teaching them how to block and to parry, not how to attack. So if they need to be in combat, he doesn't want them like fighting offensively. He wants them to defend themselves. Mm. He's taking the position of the aggressor. Gandalf, we could pass through the mines of Moria. My cousin Balin would give us a royal welcome. Ah! 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 Sorry. Oh, there he shot him. <laughs> You'd also argue that he's taking the position of interest in these two. He um he's connected yep. to Merry and Pippin quite a bit. It's not arbitrary that he defends them at the end. I would not take the road to Moria unless I had no other choice. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's brilliant relationship it's, building. It's a nice yeah, it's a nice counterpoint to his character as well, because it would be easy to write him off as like one dimensional of, you know, he's this um arrogant you know, proud warrior. An from... unfortunately large amount of people come away from watching Lord of the Rings thinking Boromir is a bad guy and a piece of shit. Yeah. Oh, he cares oh. so much about the hobbits, yeah. Crabine from Dunland! Hide! Hurry! Hurry up! No, he's a good man. He really is. He was he's just a very uh, good man. He's got flaws. He's a hero. He's a hero who's seen more shit than any of these people. Dude, his scene's gonna get to me this time around like it does every single time. Bring it, I don't think they'll talk back to you. <laughs> and keep trying, though. We must take the pass of Karatras. God, that's... Yeah, that's nice and ominous, isn't it? It's, just, uh, it, it's like, by the way, I know you weren't done enjoying the stuff you were just seeing. Here's some more. It's like... Yeah. <laughs> uh, Here we go. <laughs> that, that shot when he picks it up. Oh, I, I love how, like, soft the the... One ring melody here is. It, oh, it's look so, at that! Like, look at that! I, I just love the so way nice. the ring looks. You know, it's so awesome. plain, so mundane. It's so plain, exactly. It is a strange fate that we should suffer so much fear and doubt over so small a thing. Everyone's so fucking frozen. Like, what's he gonna do? It looks like my uh. The wedding ring for my first marriage. Did you throw it into the fire? I probably should have. I actually <laughs> kept it. I, it's on a chain and it acts like the one ring now. <laughs> you I'm can't touch it. it. It's forbidden. I can't touch it, though. You can't yeah. touch it, can't let it go. Oh, man. Give the ring to Frodo. And look, he comes through. He gives it back. Uh, even if he molds a little bit afterward. Yeah, a little bit of molding, yeah. I can not. Said like a true cock. I you care not. Lot, don't you? No, it's fine. I don't care. <laughs> totally. Tussle the hit. And yeah, what what we come away with in this scene is everyone being more suspicious of him. Look at that. Oh, like so he, was, he was prepared. He, he was, was ready. ready to oh, yeah. Cut him down. Look at this. Look at this. Ah, there's so much to just praise it's all the time. <laughs> it's so detailed. Yeah, so I'm wondering like what this is. Is this like a like a practical well, miniature yeah. that they move and yeah. have a camera go towards and they can like open it up and separate it? If you try to lead them over Garadras, and if that fails, where then will you go? Part of this makes me wonder, you know the people who, like, gobble up stuff like Ahsoka, or whatever have you, and they legitimately believe there's strong storytelling in it. It's like, if you were to then make them watch something like Lord of the Rings, would they die of, like, an overload of quality? If the mountain defeats you, 
Will you risk a more dangerous road? <laughs> it does actually make me wonder if they would even appreciate it. Yeah. If they would recognize what they're seeing, or would they just see it as being on the same level as a soldier? Probably, yeah. Would they just be like, yeah, they're both really good. There is a fell voice on the air. Shadowmar! Someone did a Star Wars tier list of all the shows and oh, movies. No. And they had they oh. had Andor up at the very top, but it was right next to like Revenge of the Sith, Mandalorian season one, and Ahsoka was right below it. Oh. And uh, like I just like I don't fucking understand. A New Hope was on the same level as Ahsoka was. Oh, it wasn't even Jesus. The top tier. But the thing is, no, I know it's just, fucking crazy. You know, I, Stand up! We must turn back! Go! When you give it time, is anybody gonna remember Ahsoka compared to, yeah. you know, I mean, 20 years later, Lord of the They're Rings in Gores? Look at this. Yeah. That's what we call fucking epic. Oh, yeah. He doesn't even need to shoot a sky laser. There's an old man yelling, <laughs> and it's wonderful. Yep. Dude, um, Legolas so right now fine. is probably like, fucking hell. All this time I spent <laughs> above the snow, and then it gets me. But that really bugs him. That really upsets him being well, below Well, first out, though. Above. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Where's Ghibli? <laughs> <laughs> Make me the cup of Rohan! I take the worst road to my city! Imagine yeah. you were just casually climbing the mountain and people, like, rose from the snow doing... Like that. The gap of Rohan takes us too close to Isengard! I love um, the preferences between the characters. Of course, Ghibli's like, let's fucking do Moria. Let us go to the mines of Moria. I love this voice. You fear to go in there. You fear to go into those mines. The dwarves delve too greedily and too deep. Oh man, we're gonna see them uncover the Balrog in Rings of Power Season 2. That's right, we got a teaser. They got the Balrog there at the bottom. You know what they awoke in the darkness of Khazad-dûm. Yeah. Oh, look Can't at him. Can't fucking wait to see the Balrog again. Dude, the Balrog is so awesome. Shadow and flame. I love how they, they tease it. By uh, showing like a sketch of it that looks yeah. fucking great as well. I know Incredible. it's so fucking cool, and then it, yeah. you see it, and it's like even cooler, like by a massive margin. We cannot stay here. This will be the death of the Hobbit. Yeah, they really did it justice because Tolkien describes it so beautifully as well that it's made of fire and shadow, and it's just a uh, great monster. We will go through the mines. So be it. Yeah, and it's remembered forever, and it's an example of the, the era using CG where it's needed, where it was a mm. tool. How's your shoulder? Better than it was. You wonder if it is, like, because, I mean, of course, there was an immense amount of visual effects here, but even, you know, it's not like every single shot had it compared to some stuff now where, like, 100% of the shots have visual effects work. You must be careful now. You feel its power growing, don't you? I felt it too. If it's like a, a matter of all of the effort is strained, it's spread so thin that like it hampers everything. Maybe that's the reason why Iron Man looks pretty crap towards the end. Evil will be drawn to you from outside the fellowship. And a fear from within. Well, because how it's thin not is like it the... spread exactly? Is it spread like butter over too much bread? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I thin. guess so. so yeah, you you imagine the, yeah. the TV show or the movie is bread, and there's a little, you know, you've got one, you get a nice big. What would you call the quantity of butter, like, on a spoon? What would you call it? Not like a dollop. A spoonful? What, what would you call it? A oh, a butter on a, on a spoon? <laughs> on a spoon. No, on a on a knife. Did oh. I say spoon? Yeah. He said spoon. <laughs> oh. was, which is fine, if that's how you spread your... No, that is <laughs> not, not fine. That not, is not fine, fine to spread butter that way, Rags. I don't believe you believe that. Well, then do I trust? You must trust yourself. Trust your own strength. We're all having a good time. We're watching Lord of the Rings. He'll, he'll, he's <laughs> multicultural, Rags. He's like, yeah, you do you. That's how they do it over there. You know, it's all right. We're watching Lord of the Rings all as well. How many powers in this world for good or for evil? Some are greater than I am. I always do enjoy watching these, assuming the Lord of the Rings of the Third Age, the games are actually canon, and that the team in that are just, they're just like an hour behind the Fellowship all the time. They're just, if you just wait here a little longer, just you'll meet them. them. They even have Gandalf, like, fuck up on some stuff throughout these films. Isn't that crazy? Why isn't he perfect? <laughs> Dwarf doors are invisible when closed. Masters cannot find them if their secrets are forgotten. Why doesn't that surprise me? 
There was a there was a year between the releases for these films, right? Yes. yes. Can you imagine the yeah. fucking pain if they had made it three years between each one? Oh, fuck off. Speak, friend, and enter. Melon. 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 What are you going to do then? Knock your head against these doors, Peregrine Took, and if that does not shatter them, and I am allowed a little peace from foolish questions. Because I never had to live it, but the gap between Empire and Return of the Jedi, three years? <laughs> it was brutal, yeah. especially when you were like 10, you know? <laughs> do not disturb the water. I saw, it, well, I saw Star Wars when I was seven, and I was 10 when I saw Empire. Man. Now that would be formative. I say that as if I didn't watch them around about the same age as well. Yeah, I would have watched them all at once, so, you know. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, we had to wait. But I had and, to wait for Lord of uh, the Rings. I joined you in the wait for that one. Speak, friend. And enter. Melon. Imagine obsess I, like, obsessing over that movie as much as I do now, or for Lord of the Rings, with no internet. Dude, we would all... Okay, If imagine these came out today. It would never happen. But if they did, and we knew that we had to wait three years for Two Towers, we would all die. It would be insane. That would be pretty yeah, tough. Yeah, it would it? be... Well, the end of Empire, yeah, that was, it was like three years? What? <laughs> Soon, Master Elf, you will enjoy the fabled hospitality of the dwarves. We read a lot of Starlog magazine and Bantha Tracks, which was the newsletter from the Star Wars fan club. Yeah, I guess it's like um, it wasn't enough. half and half, because if we did have the situation we have now, but back then, it'd be, you can share your pain of waiting with everyone else, so. Roaring fires, malt beer, red meat off the bone. I, I mean, will. you'd understand the pain of uh, waiting for season two of uh, Rings of Power, you know? To be fair, we were just <laughs> dreading it. I think Gary is very much invested in that coming out sooner <laughs> rather than later. <laughs> let's I go, hate. season two. Let's, let's fucking go. It's the home of my cousin, Bali. And they call it a mine. A mine! These Moria vibes are fucking so good. It's so creepy and dark. Dude, the way yeah. he describes it before they hit the realization. This is no mine. It's a tomb. <laughs> oh, well, this he, is wrong. Gimli's not paying attention. He's yeah. just like, oh, we're gonna party here. Wait a minute. Oh! He sells it too. He's not like a fucking idiot character who's just like, whoa, this is weird. Well, that just happened. We make for the gap of Rohan. <laughs> and then, on top of everything else, a big water monster's trying to kill him. Crazy. What a terrible day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting in there straight away. Um, yeah. Yeah. He's such a lad. The thing is, if you play the game, Sam does a hell of a lot more. He kills like a thousand orcs. <laughs> he's kind of, uh, he's, you don't want to fuck with him. <laughs> I would still give an arm and a leg to watch Tolkien play Lord of Ring Gollum. <laughs> he's so <laughs> fucking funny. We now have but one choice. We must face the long dark of Moria. Fuck, I can't remember seeing this in the theater and being like, oh shit, you know, Moria, the dark, the... It trapped you now. Oh, Moria's just got, like, there's nothing like it. Like, being trapped in there, having to go through it. Oh, it's so spooky They do, the build-up is so great, because we know what's happened here, and then they do all the, the sounds that set off all the people coming, and then we find out that all of them scatter because something bigger is coming, the thing that was talked yeah. about by Saruman yeah. earlier. It's like, oh... There are older and fouler things than orcs in the deep places of the world. And I mean, you know, it's a simple thing as well. They can't go back. They have to go forward. There is yeah. no retreat. This is probably a model. Yeah, this is a model. Yeah. It looks oh, it looks so good. good. Rad. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call escapism. Captured perfectly. Yep. Oh, yeah. The wealth of Moria was not in gold or jewels. It's that little quality where when you're in the cinema and you're super into this, you forget for a second you're a person that's come to watch a film. Well, Robert's not here, so I'll use this word. It's established a verisimilitude. And verisimilitude. since he's not here, I'll say it. You felt it. For the first time in cinema, <laughs> we believed. We believed.
I mean, it's, it's almost like this thing is strictly for nerd circles, but you kind of, that's kind of the point, right? You, for a second, you get it so into it that it is indistinguishable from real, and then the credits the hit, and you're like, right, back real, The world yeah. is real, you accept it as what it is, rather than people on a set, you know, yeah. dressed up in, in fancy costumes. Uber had a shirt of mithril rings, but Thorin gave him. Oh, that was a kingly gift, yes! But also, what a cool those visual. Are steep ass stairs. What about a sword yeah. of mithril? Do they have that? I never told him. But its worth was greater than the value of the shard. I feel the need to mention this, but it, I don't know, it's just neat. You come across this in the Third Age, and each of the doorways, I think one of them leads to a chest, one of them is the wrong way, and then the correct way is the correct way in the film. Yes, that's right. Third Age was fine. It, I like it <laughs> no, a lot. The Third Age was fine. <laughs> I have no memory of this place. I just fucking remembered that... Rings of Power has Mithril tied to the life force of elves for some oh, fucking yeah. reason. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't remind us of that. That was the, That's the kind of shit. When they were saying there was a fight between a soldier and a Balrog in a tree or whatever, I remember being like, is this some lore shit? And when you guys like, no, <laughs> this, is, this is new. <laughs> like, no, they made this shit up. You shouldn't have to make up too much stuff if mm. you're adapting Lord of the Rings world. It's gone. He's been following us for three days, and now the ring has drawn him here. He will never be rid of his need for it. CJ looks good for being mm. from 2000. I think it, you really see the difference between this and how he is in Two Towers. Oh yeah. Return of the King. Oh, it was fucking groundbreaking, the CG on him in Two Towers and Return of the King. He escaped the dungeons of Barad-dûr. Escaped? Or was set loose? That's crazy. A full CG character that's going to be involved in many scenes. That's Jar Jar Binks, okay? Super expressive, lots I, of I, lines, I, the voice acting. He hates and loves the ring. As he hates and loves himself. The thing he, like, doesn't quite cover here, but the books explain a bit better, is, like, the fact that Bilbo's first act on taking the ring was an act of pity, is perhaps what helped protect him from the effects of it. Smeagol, he was once called before the ring found him, before it drove him mad. Like yep. if he had just straight up murdered Gollum and taken the ring, it probably would have gotten a hold of him a lot quicker. That's a pity Bilbo didn't kill him when he had the chance. It was pity that stayed Bilbo's hand. Gandalf just spitting some hard philosophy here <laughs> in the middle of the spooky cave. Many that live deserve death, and some that die deserve life. Can you give it to them, Frodo? Super important line. Yeah. Can you give it to them? Fuck yeah! <laughs> Do not be too eager to deal out death and judgment. No death and judgment. But good the or ill. The or all ends. Even the very wise can see all ends. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, the big highlight, the crazy highlight of the Hobbit films, I remember like being the Gollum Hobbit scenes are fucking amazing. That was good. Blesses and splashes, precious. That's a meaty mouthful. Pagginses. What is a uh, Baggins's precious? Just, just you and me. Yes, just, just, just us. Yes. Like, yeah, really yeah, good. The and then, with, uh, yeah, Bilbo and Gollum. It's I really legitimately liked... a really good scene. It's got an elfish blade, but it's not an elf's. In the dark, shut up. I didn't say anything. I wasn't talking to you. Give up. Give us a chance, precious. Give us a chance. Bilbo and uh, Smaug as well. I really like that scene too. Come now. Don't be shy. Step into the light. The stupendous. Do you think flattery will keep you alive? No, no. Did you think I did not know this day would come, God? Would come crawling back? The, the thing that's really the the really only bad thing about the scene between Bilbo and Gollum is that if you recall, it is intercut with the fucking Goblin Town yes, bullshit yes. that the dwarves yeah. are doing. <laughs> It's cut in between. Yeah, and what a shame. Goblins. The Goblin King guy, voiced by Ian McShane, is like. You thought you could escape me. What are you going to do now, wizard? But he's like a clown. It's like, why, why wouldn't you. He is why, like a uh... clown. Yeah. No, no! That'll do it. Ian McShane is precious. You should use him well. I wish none of this had happened. So do all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. 
I love how at the end of that scene it actually uses the Shire theme when he's thinking of killing Gollum and then chooses not to. It's just like, oh, that's a weird you, little moment where you hit me in the feels when these yeah. bad movies. I'm almost wanting to like watch it again now off the top of my head. I remember the um the vibes from Martin Freeman are perfect because it keeps balancing from like this murderous goblin person's gonna eat me or actually focusing on the riddles. <laughs> like, let me think. Let me think. Realm, the dwarf city of Dwarfdale. Those movies are so weird for me because I happily I happily watch them and enjoy them, even though I think they're bad films. They're they're bad about here. Yeah. Same here. Do you know they have I, good I scenes in them. Yeah, there, sometimes. there's like there's yeah. like a quality to it that doesn't feel entirely cynical, like so many other shitty movies, because you can it tell just feels that like they was... did a bad job. What happened is like they got fucked by the studio. Well, they yeah. tried, and then like people behind the scenes were like, "No, we're not going to allow you to make a good movie." Which is weird because I'd be like, "Jackson, you could do whatever the fuck you want." <laughs> well, he Jackson was brought in at the eleventh hour, wasn't he? Yeah, but he yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. A different director. It wasn't working out. He left. Like. Jackson comes in and it's like, okay, I can make a good movie, but I need a bit more time to do this. No, uh, we've yep. got a release date. You have to do it. Oh. No. Guillermo de like... Toro was fired from that project. Which he is another, like yeah. I could I could buy his Hobbit films being that's great as well. a very Warner Brothers thing to do. Yeah. Here lies Balin, son of Hundin, Lord of Morgan. Warner Brothers is knee-jerk and stupid, and that had a lot to do with it. Yeah, which, and as Rag said, and I totally agree, if it were me, I feel like you'd be pushing whatever we gave him for Lord of the Rings, give him that again and more. Yes, here's a check, write every number you need at the end of the pro. We will pay it, just do it again. It's as I feared. <laughs> just do it again. Use your magical mm -hmm. powers. And make it about the Hobbit. I was yeah, gonna say, by the way, force him to make a third movie that he didn't want to make well, in the first place. Yeah, if and he that wants high, to, that high make frame it rate. Oh, the uh, high where frame would you? Rate um, thing, yeah. We must move on. The scale of Moria, as they were showing it then, the camera panning around. I remember distinctly when I first saw that as being like, "Good God, the dwarves would have had to have worked for so long, so many man hours to make something so incredible." Well, I sure love digging. They have taken the bridge and the second hall. Oh, yeah, this is nice and ominous as well. That guy was right until the end. Committed. You cannot get out. They are coming. No, oh, he <laughs> turned so quickly, like, I didn't... It wasn't... Uh... This was just fucking how, loud long, in the cinema, too. I love how long this lasts for as well. <laughs> it's <laughs> so... And banging. The shots capture it so much, you don't see any creatures. But you know. Yeah. I just love Gandalf's expression. He's just like, oh, what the fuck, man? <laughs> you made a man read a piece. Like, like, in that moment, he was genuinely thinking of pushing Pippin down that well. Fool of a took. Throw yourself in next time and rid us of your stupidity. The Pippin Gandalf mm -hmm. relationship is great throughout the three of them as well. But I love the line in the third movie where he was like, of all the hobbits I've met, you are the worst. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you have this sense that he genuinely believes that a hobbit can come through no matter what, but this one, he's like, I'm not so fucking sure about you. <laughs> Absolutely love this scene, the action of it. You get to see everybody doing their crazy shit. We were just and then you're there. Like, oh shit, that's a place where we were, we were there. And also makes you think, oh, it's a good thing they didn't go down that way. Oh, look at all these signals for like the buildup is fucking perfect. Just and this cat like reflexes. This thing might be a sword made with Mithril, to answer a question from earlier. Maybe. They have a cave troll. Well, it just comes across like adamantium vibranium, you know, you'd think yeah. there'd be a Mithril sword. No! No! Fuck him up, Gandalf. Let them come. One dwarf yet in Moria who still draws breath. And he's got a personal motivation. It's so good. We've got it all. And yeah, this is such. It's dropped on him so quickly. It's like, you better fucking hold your own. This is going to be a tough one. 
Yeah. Dude, and, and it's just looking at them, and we don't see them until they bust through the door. It's f fucking perfect. In terms of a big ow, action scene, ow, it's not it's since the prologue that we've had it. This is like, here he comes, boys. Yes. And the music stops once the fighting, like, you know, kicks off yep. here. Fuck him oh, up! Biogenic sounds. <laughs> Why are you guys doing this when you should just be like jumping off each other's swords and slashing everything? Oh, doing without... stupid yeah, CG easel, bullshit, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. I love the fucking fountain as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you prick. <laughs> but like, oh, it's, it, it feels because like that feels like you could have squished him right there and then. <laughs> That would have been it for Sam. Movie Bob yeah. does a great job. And then this is where the fellowship shit comes into it. Well, Loads of people almost die, so but it's someone they else coming in. They're watching out for each other. Yeah, this here is a big moment for two. By the way, action scenes, hugely important for character. For example... Boromir, oh. getting his ass kicked. And then he spots who did that for you. It was Aragorn. You desecrated the fucking grave, you asshole. Poor Ballin. <laughs> and this, I feel, is the beginning of the. Gimli is quite a funny character. <laughs> this is a lot to work with there. Uh, yep. <laughs> then Legolas is the badass character, which. Evolves. I mean, here is great. <laughs> oh, I love it. The whole thing is precision. Finesse, yep. You know, people always cite the cave troll as looking really outdated, and I just... I think... So, no, the thing about it is, like, he's low detail and res, right, compared to, like, now, but I feel like they've integrated him about as well as they can. <laughs> He looks pretty good. Yep. He looks like he's in this you environment. You always buy him. Yeah, you buy him 100%. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Everyone treats him as super real, like the way that he hides from him. I like think he looks great. I really, I like his creature design as well. Like, yeah. it doesn't, it's not I don't too know. much. It's no, not too much. Like, it, it looks like a creature all really... I could believe. I could yeah, believe that this guy really... lives underground. Yeah. yeah, it's really blunt. Like, you can see he's got this like big bony like plate of a forehead. If you look at the special features, they go into like how they made the 3D model and they like paid attention to like how his fingernails are supposed to look because he's yeah. supposed to burrow and shit. But I look at the CGI for this and I don't see I don't see it as very dated. Unlike say the first Jurassic Park where that Brachiosaurus scene looks extremely dated now. <laughs> I don't have a problem much, even with the Brachiosaurus. Comparatively. In fact, Jurassic Park... <laughs> like Lord of the Rings, are the, the select group of films that got to benefit from this era. <laughs> the wonderful marriage of CG and practical. Yep. <laughs> Such a moment of yeah. no fucking way. He's dead. <laughs> like, after all this effort already. A little face it makes too. <laughs> I like the fact that even if it didn't puncture the Mithril, it would have destroyed his fucking ribs. <laughs> Probably the, him anyway. Yeah, like it's uh, liquefied some organs, maybe. The thing is, it <laughs> looks like it. it went through the hole between his arm and his chest. I guess it would have scraped by, and that could have been the reason why he had that reaction. Like it was pressed up against the like the right prong was actually against the wall. <laughs> Somewhat, yeah. The, I think there's a way you can buy that that would have worked, as in like with the things that we know to be true. It's kind of a glancing blow. Yeah. <laughs> That's, seriously, that's like one of the biggest core elements of all of Lord of the Rings, I think, is that we should work together. 
I'm not hurt. Oh, over yeah. and over, they show them working together and watching out for each other. Even when Gandalf was illuminating off the side of the cliff, which I probably shouldn't be doing if you're trying to lay low. Even as like as Mary like starts to peer over the edge, Pippin like kind of holds his yeah. chest, like don't fall. Just like little all the little things like that that show that they're watching out for each other. Mithril. Full of surprises, Master Baggins. You know, I think the only thing that would have made that scene better is if someone stabbed the troll in the head and then splashed the blood on the camera. That I felt like already summed up in Rings of Power what you're in for, watching her kill that ice troll yeah. or whatever. It was just like, oh god. To the bridge of Kassadun. And you guys see the Steven voiceover clip where when uh, Galadriel's giving out her gifts. Yes. In, in this movie, it's all pieces <laughs> it's so of the ice fucking troll. Funny, yeah. <laughs> Also, yeah, this shit. I remember being like, they're so gonna die. <laughs> what are they gonna do? Well, they, they run, run the and then run, run again. Yeah. Keep running. I just... Oh, I love oh, that, shit. too. Oh, oh. And seriously, this would be an example of how do you write them out of this, and by God, do they do a job of writing them out of it. Yeah, they do. Goblins everywhere. I, I love that one, the close-up shot that's gonna come where you can see like the fucking pupils on the goblin contract. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it, that just eyes. sticks with me. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah, one. He's got the narrow slits of eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Just like caddish eyes. Yeah. Ugh. Oh. Oh shit. And that's the thing. What makes an army of thousands of, like, horrible dark creatures run away? Galadriel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is this new devilry? Well, and, that, and that, that's kind of what I was going to say earlier, was that I think the people who made that scene with her doing that to the troll, they would genuinely be confused. They'd be like, isn't she badass? Why do you guys think, what's wrong with it? And it's just like, the fact that you can't figure it out sucks. Yep. Yeah, and the Gandalf is just like, we need to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, like, this is yeah. bad. A Balrog, a demon of the ancient world. Also, fantastic name. Probably one I, of the I, best I, names for, like, a mythical creature. This foe is beyond any of Run! I Run! like that. <laughs> get the fuck out! It's really subtle, but Legolas's expression there, just, like, fear in his eyes, because, like, yep. he would know what that is. Yep. Being an elf and all yeah. that. He knows the gravity of, like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Corrupted Maiar. See, always watching out for each other. Lead them on, Aragorn. The bridge is near. The fact that work. this whole scene is just written on the script and they ran across the bridge. It is better than most things. Do as I say! Sword on no more use here. What a line, too. My sword. Yeah, he's gonna fuck him up with his magic sword. He just improv something that's better than like most shows now. Uh, such striking. Yeah, Visual. well, this part's tense as fuck. It's relatively simple, like, there's a gap that they have to get across, and they yep. get, they're under fire. <laughs> but, like, compare this to The Hobbit, where there's, like, insane, you know, they're falling down huge chasms, and there's, like, bits yeah. of uh, wood and everything all around them, and it's just all held together as a little bridge thing that gets smaller and smaller. It's just so shit. Like, there's no weight to any of that. Yeah, this one's really simple, right? It's like, it's a staircase. Yeah, it's a staircase with no guardrails over, like, a bottomless yeah, and, like, pit. Yeah, like, if any of <laughs> us had to do that... Arrows, uh... Yeah, if you had to leap over a gap like that, it's not far, but when you're hundreds of feet in the air, it's fucking terrifying. Yeah, yeah I bet you'd be absolutely. shitting your pants if that was you. And, of yeah, course, Boromir's got the... He got took the them both. That's the thing, though, isn't it? Like, the hobbits need some... Like, the, this is not something they're ready for. Nobody tosses a dwarf! Nobody tosses a dwarf. <laughs> oh, it's and so fucking in the good. the movie, he does. <laughs> oh, it's so great. Yeah! <laughs> not the beard! Not the beard! <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little touch of comedy to keep things, you know. And it's Legolas who saves him. This is all—it's—it's it's, yep. it's all adding up to different payoffs. 
It, it's yeah. literally like two payoffs in like ten seconds. Mm -hmm. Aragorn we'll not Gimli saying Aragorn don't, don't throw me, and then of course yeah. the Gimli bore me. It's so simple, right? It's like in the fight before where Aragorn saves Boromir and then they make sure to show that they both, you know, recognize that that's what happened. The best right, payoffs will be set up. In the second Hobbit movie, they do something similar where uh, Thorin saves Legolas and they don't even like have Legolas know about it or acknowledge it. And it's like, well, why the fuck did we do that? Yep. This oh, scene shit. and uh, the one at Amon Hen are kind of what define what I love about Aragorn. Just like his total dedication to like making sure Frodo's okay. Oh, that release, his, he, the music is like, we did it. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here into the next incredibly tense scene. <laughs> Over the bridge! Fly! Here he comes! <laughs> oh. oh, I love yeah. that. It's so fucking good. The roar is such a specific one that matches him entirely. Now, the Balrog looks fucking glorious in every shot, except maybe one. It's this one. Yeah, not so great. It don't look very good. But that's okay. It's like it scores, you know, mid, while everything else scores top-notch. Yeah. You cannot pass! The smoke and the fire makes this thing look fucking glorious. When it, like, raises its arms and the fire, like, kind of mm -hmm. emanates out from it, it's, like, one of the best fucking shots ever. Get down! Oh. And this Chad is like, nah, yeah. you're stopping here, buddy. <laughs> I'm a serpent of the secret fire. Wielder of the flame, Mabano. I love it. Mm. The amount of fucking courage you gotta have for this one. <laughs> the dark fire will not avail you. Flame of Udun. I, I love that this was acted by Ian McKellen while he was staring at a fucking tennis ball on a string. This is what I mean, like... <laughs> I think people get the wrong impression when he says, like, you know, you can't act when you're not across from another actor. It's just that... Go back to the shadow! Being separated from actors for so long disconnects yeah. you from the actual yeah. fantasy, which is like an irony almost. God, that was... That was that's it's what I mean. It's, it will never age. Never gonna age. It's years old. <laughs> It's better CG than you'll catch Shit. in the. L Look at it. You shall not pass! I don't know how they did it. <laughs> it looks I'm watching, so fucking I'm watching good. the 4K version, and it looks yeah. fucking sweet. It looks so good. When I first saw it in 4K, I was kind of like. It felt like watching it for the first time again in a lot of ways. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love God. that they use like a lightning strike sound effect when he cracks that whip. Yeah. Boromir, he stops him. Protecting him. Yeah. No! No! Yeah, because no! yeah, all the goblins are scattering around on the other side now as well. Brother, you fools! Oh, that Jeez. shit hit hard in the cinema. Uh, <laughs> at least I didn't have to wait three years to see him in the next and see, movie. see, Barmy is concerned about the health of everyone currently, but Aragorn's fucking like, did that just happen? Yeah. No! Yeah, I, I remember watching this as well. Like, obviously, I haven't read the books. I knew he wasn't dead, but man, it's so well done. Like, well, it the, matches the, the hero's journey, right? <laughs> like, the, the mentor dying is like a big portion of it and i mean i bought it completely that i wouldn't be seeing him again and it sucks because i loved him <laughs> i was like this character's amazing please that cost I mean, that's, going through it's, Moria. It's exactly that's how you emphasize that yeah this shit was actually like pretty pretty fucking terrifying And it's given its time. Well, that, I mean, oh, it's, I it's kind of uh, reaction there as well. It's just... Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, him he, almost he, feel responsible for this, because, like, he kind of brought this all down on them by accident. Legolas, get them up. Give them a moment, for pity's sake!
And it's just, yeah, it's, it's how much he meant to everybody. He has to snap Legolas out of it almost. We need to see all of these reactions. We must reach the woods of Lothlorien. On your feet, sir. Sometimes I look at these shots and I'm just like, how is this a real place on this planet? <laughs> it's too glorious. Right out! I mean, that's what scouts are for, right? They're supposed to find these locations. They used to have those in movies. I don't know if they do anymore. There's parts of uh, Arizona in the, in the desert that look kind of like this, and especially like Rohan. Yeah, the just... Arizona desert looks like another planet. Yeah, it does. Kind of surreal. I've uh, talked about it before, but when you have like crazy weather events where everything goes red or crazy color things happen, I'm just like, are there directors out there now rushing mm -hmm. out, getting their shots? <laughs> like, gotta well, get this. We had that, that weird dust storm thing in New York City where everything was orange. Oh, that was from the fires. Oh, the yeah. fires. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah that was all the wildfire smoke. I mean, from that me. shit was yeah. surreal. Stick out, young hobbits. They say that a great sorceress lives in these woods. That happened to us in San Francisco, and that was weird, dude, because everything was orange tinted. Everything. Yeah, it wasn't as bad in Michigan, but everything was like a deep gray, and the sun was just like a fucking red circle in the sky. The air tasted fucking horrible. You walked out yeah, outside yeah, and imagine. it was just... An elf witch of terrible power. Ugh, it was terrible. San Francisco looked like Blade Runner 2049, but more entertaining. Oh, God. I have the eyes of a hawk and the ears of a fox. Ooh. I'm pretty sure this is Gimli's hair's fucked up, right? Because they didn't have the right wig at this point or something. I remember hearing about it. It's uh, he doesn't, he doesn't have his, his helmet on. There's, well, no, there's yeah. that. I'm pretty sure they got the wrong hair for him. I remember reading it somewhere. Remember, his hair is like um, big and uh, ginger. In there, it was like um, a dark brownish gray, like a, flat, a blackish yeah. gray almost. So I'm pretty sure it's they didn't have the correct wig at the time, and so they're just like, well, fuck it. cultural impact of the Lord of the Rings trilogy is nothing short of phenomenal. Rings of Power, I don't know that how many people who loved it remember what happened in it. You bring great evil here, Ring Baron. The dwarf breathed so loud we could have shot him in the dark. Gandalf's death was not in vain, nor would he have you give up hope. The enemy knows you have entered here. Hey, look, it's Cal Caliborn. Yeah. No, it's Caliborn. No, it's Caliborn. Hey, Caliborn. Caliborn. <laughs> you carry a heavy burden, Frodo. Don't carry the weight of the dead. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like with this trilogy especially, there's so much... The biggest moments of it are stuff that you guys, I assume, like me, would never forget. The heart of Elvendom on Earth. But like Rings of Power is actually difficult, along with a lot of other stuff that comes out uh, in, in yeah, our like, modern name age. Yeah, you like name the three most iconic scenes from Rings of Power season one. I think and that's like, all. Oh, well, like, you, you, uh, just just uh, as a thought silly, experiment. He was taken by both shadow and flame, a Balrog of Morgoth. When I say Return of the King, what is the first like imagery that comes to mind for you guys? Ooh, oh, Aragorn's so coronation. Interesting. I, Ride of the Rohirrim. That's yeah. yeah so, that was what I was. For me, what comes to my mind first. So. It, genuinely, it's, it's like a um, flickering in my head between that and uh, when Aragorn leads everybody at the Black Gate. It's those two. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. full of amazing scenes. It's full of amazing I, scenes. For we went needlessly into the net of Moria. Needless were none of the deeds of Gandalf in life. I feel like terrible. all four and a half hours of that movie flashed within a couple seconds in my mind. The lighting of the beacons, love that. Oh, oh, that scene where the Witch King of Angmar uh, lands on like the oh god, it's of, so uh, cool. Of Mias Morgul. <laughs> and then like the the sky beam lights off, and then it like screams like. I love that part. The best sky yeah. beam in yeah. the history of cinema. Do not let the great emptiness of Khazad Doom fill your heart, Gimli, son of Gloin. Brought two towers. I have a feeling everyone have the same answer, maybe. Yeah, they? yeah. Is it Helm's yeah. Deep? Yeah. Helm's Deep yeah, related? <laughs> charge oh, of well, the, it's, it's actually, really no. the one thing that like sticks with me more than anything else is Sam's speech at the end of that movie. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's good. good. One. I don't. I think for me, it's the visual of uh, all of the ladders, you know, raising above the uh, oh, that yeah. sweeping shot of all of also, the ladders raising up onto the uh, the wall. Love is now mingled with grief. 
I don't think it counts well, as Helm's Deep exactly, but I often think about the the shot of Saruman basically march to Helm's Deep, that, that part. March to Helm's Deep! Leave none alive! The quest stands upon the edge of a knife. Stray but a little and it will fail. I was thinking of that part where, you know, the, the sweeping music comes in. We see Saruman at his tower, like, kind of like saying, oh, fuck, everything's fucked up. I don't I, even I think uh, it's it, for me. It's uh, when Theoden and Aragorn ride out. Fell deeds awake. Now for wrath, now for ruin and the red dawn. Like when all seems lost and he just yeah. gives that amazing speech fuck like yeah. fell deeds awake. Now for wrath, now for ruin. Hell yeah. Yet hope remains. While the company is true. Or or when he's dressing up, you know, and you know, the <laughs> days have got down in the west. The days have gone down in the west, behind the hills, into shadow. Oh god, that well, speech is particularly poignant. This? Yes. Yeah, but Rings of Power, Scott. No. Well, Lord. well, you know. Stop it. <laughs> Elemental Gandalf. But they don't mention his fireworks. Should be a verse about them. I only remember the memes. No, like, yeah, only the memes. Water. Like, like, give me, give, rings, give it to me now. Give it to me raw. Give, it, give me the meat and give it to me raw. <laughs> give it to me raw. Like that in 2023. The finest rockets ever seen. They burst in stars of blue and green, falling like a rain of flowers. Oh, that doesn't do them justice. It's got Galadriel and Sauron just standing on a raft, screaming at each yeah. other. Yeah. Oh my that's god! What yeah. Oh, that's Fucking I cinema right there, here. boys. I heard a voice inside my head. She spoke of my father and the fall of Gondor. So I had a friend who didn't watch the show past like the first couple episodes, and I showed him that scene, and he like fell on the floor laughing. <laughs> <laughs> she said to me, "Even now there is hope left, but I cannot see it." By the way, I'm gonna ask the same question for Fellowship, but I feel like it's difficult at this point because we've just we've literally just watched it. <laughs> it's like, well, it's just everything at this well, point. Well, I mean, I think the Council of Elrond and Moria. There's definitely are the two that. that come to my mind first. I would see the glory of Gondor restored, white town of Ecthalion, glimmering like a spike of pearl and silver. Breaking of the hand. Fellowship. That's breaking of the Fellowship for me. Yeah, like, that whole last scene is just like one of the best scenes in any movie I've seen. Ever. Dude, that, that's think, another masterclass on cliffhanger slash end of story. Yep. They managed yeah. to nail it. One day, our paths will lead us there. The lords of Gondor have returned. But Moria, like all of Moria, establishing the Shire, like... Mm -hmm. I'm on Hen. Hard to pick. Is, uh, just, that particular crane so shot in cool on Hen is so yeah, fucking good. Yeah, with all of the... Yeah. Carrying you from Aragorn and Legolas over to Boromir. Will you look into the mirror? What will I see? Even the wisest cannot tell. A lot of my memories of this movie, like, when I think about it, is, like, whatever scene is attached to whatever my favorite songs from the soundtrack are. That's another incredibly difficult question. What is your favorite? It's like, why would I even bother asking that? Oh, <laughs> oh it's the breaking oh. of the fellowship and in dreams. It's just, those two paired together are just... Like they're fucking phenomenal. My f it's my favorite Lord of the Rings music. It's from this. For the mirror shows many things. So there's probably I, not a I wrong answer as far as I'm concerned. Subject. There's no answer that I would be like, why would you choose that? But um, yeah, for me, oh god, it's like all of it. Is it the Witch King's theme when it what it plays when he first like the Sam and Frodo see him in Return of the King? Either way, I fucking love it. Difficult to know because, like, with Rag saying the breaking of the fellowship, that's what it's called in like the official soundtrack or the theatrical soundtrack. But the extended yes. edition is Road Goes Ever On Part One. Things that were, things that are. Lighting of the beacons. Yeah, again, love that music. So good. And they have extended soundtracks now. They came out a few years ago, so it's complete and they're huge. Uh, I I got them on vinyl and on CD, but they have like we colored vinyls. They're packaged together. like book. They're so cool. Hard to find now. But. And some things that have not yet come to pass. Uh, easier to ex access now that they're on streaming services. So. Well, yes, yes. You can, I mean, if physical copies, physical copies. Which are getting well, yeah, I, ironically I harder graphic. to find. Yeah. <laughs> Alan Wake 2 is one of the first games that's just going to never have a physical release of that caliber. It's just like, seriously? Yep. No physical. No physical. 
that Halloween that Wake 2. Did? There's only digital versions of it. Really? Mm -hmm. That's bizarre. I hate it. I actively hate it. You think that they'd be able to make money by saying, like, if you pay extra, because it's not going to be, like, Dude, normally, Rags, the, like, done, but... Do you know, like, I assume you do, but collector's editions of, like, big budget games often don't come with the game now, My physically. Dead Space collector's edition, I think it has a code for the game. It has a, it has a CD pack in it, but it doesn't have an actual CD in it. This imagery, incredibly important. Scouring of the Shire, correct? Or at least a foreboding yeah, of the potential. We could either talk about now or later, but the choice to remove the oh, scouring it's like a Tim of the Burton Shire. World. was fine. Probably. I didn't, I didn't yeah. love that whole section from the Strange. books either. Works in the book, wouldn't work in the film. <laughs> But that's another one fans would have been like, they fucked it up. Yeah. They fucked it up. And it's like, like calm down, know, calm down. It's like the Bombadil thing. It's like, it's weird that we met God in the woods all of a sudden. <laughs> that's kind of weird. We should probably just not have that in the movies. He will try to take the ring. You know of whom I speak. Like, the thing is, is like, I think Tom Bombadil is just straight up a plot hole in the book. <laughs> because he, because... Like, he literally just puts on the ring and he's fine and nothing happens. And, like, they're just like, yeah, he just, like, kind of doesn't care. And it's like, that, that, that yeah. the explanation. One by one, it will destroy them all. I do like the fact that, like, you get to the, the Council of Elrond and, like, they do bring him up. Because, like, that was my thought. It's like, okay, if this thing has no power over him, then surely he can just go to more. Uh, <laughs> he's like Mordor the perfect ring bearer. Yeah. yeah. I will give you the one ring. Really? He just doesn't fucking feel like it, and it's like, what? Yeah, what he's really okay. absent-minded, and he would probably forget what he's doing halfway there and just, like, drop it or something. In place of a dark lord, you would have a queen! He's a higher being that might be a remnant of the Song of Creation, or he was a lot like Treebeard. Treebeard's, you know, an old, ancient being. Not dark, but beautiful and terrible as a lord! Who gets and he shouldn't have been pissed. in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the end result speaks for itself. This part stood out yeah. to me as a kid when I first watched it. I was like, what the fuck is happening? It's terrifying. Uh, but, but... People can try to pick it apart. And, and like, I sat behind somebody. When I was watching it the first time, I sat behind somebody who hated it. Freaking hated it. He's like, that sucked. I'm like, what? I passed the test. Oh, the reason the guy hated it because of the changes they made to the book. That's the thing, right? It's like, when it's this good as an adaptation, all of the smaller things are going to niggle at you and be like, eh. I will diminish and go into the West and remain Galadriel. I have a controversial take in thinking that there's things that this movie just straight up did better than the book. To bear a ring of power is to be alone. And if you do not find a way, no one will. Because I think some of the parts of the book uh, kind of yeah. aged poorly. But granted, they were kind of like products of their time because books were written really, really the differently 50s, then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get, like the standards then. Boromir was done better in the movie. I the think end. Aragorn was done the better end. in the movie. Yeah. I think Aragorn is straight up kind of boring in the book. Oh my god. Are we entering hot takes that I've never even heard before? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's be like the, the books are great, but like they're not perfect. All right, everyone needs to relax. Even the smallest person can change the course of the future. I mean, the same thing can be said for the I films, the but death. they may as well be. <laughs> yeah, it's like, but you know. But Boromir's death was handled better in the movie. I think um, the f breaking of the fellowship was also handled better in the movie. Like, the emotion with Frodo and Sam at that end is so much more palpable in the film than it was in the book, where it just kind of felt like, oh, Sam was an idiot and is drowning now. Do you know how the orcs first came into being? Frodo's way more abrasive in the book. It, it's way he more is. A master lot of the, servant relationship a, at first. So a lot of the yeah. characters like Faramir and Aragorn seem like more relatable in the movies than they do in the book. They were elves once taken by the dark powers. Like Aragorn in the book, just straight up, he's like, "Yeah, I'm king. Get over it." Yeah, there's a, there's definitely less self doubt in the book. It, yeah, he's like a man really... on a mission, tortured and mutilated. Ruined and terrible for life. There's one really funny scene in the two towers in the book where Aragorn tells all the Rohirrim, like, this sword is super fucking cool. 
don't touch it. And then he just kind of leaves it outside with them. And I just imagine like all of them <laughs> poking it as soon as he goes through the door. Yeah. <laughs> How affected. It looks like he snapped that Urukai's neck there. Like he Makes twisted sense. his head around. I'm fighting Urukai. I do like though the the white hand of Saruman, just as a a branding. It's good. You can make merch. Whom do you serve, Saruman? Hunt them down. Do not stop until they are found. I just remembered the first time that we did uh, EFAT movies on these. You do not know pain. You do not know fear. You will taste man flesh. And he talked about bring them alive and unspoiled. I think it was you, Mauler, who was like. <laughs> Do you mean like just don't rape the hobbit? <laughs> Why did you say yes. it's like that? You it's... Bring them to me alive and unspoiled. Sorry, I was like, I didn't want to be explicit, but I need it said. It's like, I didn't. I is. I know you pulled us from the ground and everything, but fucking hell! Oh my like, god! It, it, now like we're the... thinking about it, sir. L Lurts fucking grimaces like he's like. I wasn't thinking about that. <laughs> Earlier, when you said taste man flesh, what did you mean? <laughs> as soon as they get out of eyes of God, they're like, I don't like that guy. <laughs> they get far enough away and one of them's like, we are going to fuck the hobbits, right? And Lurch is like, oh yeah. These cloaks help shield you from unfriendly eyes. My gift for you, Legolas. Is a bow of the Galadrim. I find it interesting that she's gifted uh, Legolas a bow. Do you think he'd be like, bitch, I have the best bow that I could get. Why do you think yours is going to be better than that? <laughs> <laughs> and for you, Samwise Gamgee, elven rope. The meme is basically when Galadriel's talking about all the gifts she's given them. She says they're all from the ice troll over and over yes. again. <laughs> <laughs> Carved from the they're horde of the, the ice troll the that I defeated. Like, One small bite is enough to fill the stomach of a grown man. How many did you eat? Four. Now, do you know why these boats float? Ooh, they tell us. Upward. Rings of power yeah. taught me all about this. Because stones can't look up, but boats yeah. can look down. Boats are floaty because they look up at shiny stuff. Do you think? To rise above the height of all your fathers since the days of Elendil. So, so imagine if Aragorn gives that knife to Rosie and she kills Sauron at the end. That would be better. Ooh, yeah, yeah. That would be better. Blade and of the she's Assassin. She's pregnant, yeah. Yeah, and she rides in on like a dragon that she made friends yep. with at some point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. she, none of the boys could beat the dragon, but she convinces the dragon that he should do stuff. Or to fall into darkness with all that is left of your kin. I think it would be important too if you could have Aragorn slip on a banana peel during this scene somehow. Yeah. <laughs> I know that Rosie is his wife, but for some reason my mind like converted it to Sam's daughter. And I was like, boy, his <laughs> three-year-old is going to... <laughs> that, 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 oh that my God, make, even better. Is Arya <laughs> having the knife. Oh, <laughs> killing. That was such a depressing game. night when I saw that episode. I watched it with Wolf. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> I had a whole like 16 hours to think about that episode before we watched it and just have it like sour more and more. The death of Game of Thrones. I think my I favorite like reaction of yours was like when, when Quiburn gets killed by <laughs> the mountain. Where your queen, Sir Gregor? What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Wolf just lost like, our shit. Crushes his head. You just lost your minds. <laughs> it was so funny. The comedic timing was perfect. That's it, man. That's it. What the fuck? <laughs> that shot where his his face just slapped against the rock. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I love how that's just the end of his character. <laughs> yeah, it's just like oh, I re so, I remember yeah. the cope at the time was. Have you guys? Do you not know Frankenstein's story? Frankenstein kills Doctor Frankenstein. I was like, wait, what? No, but that's not even what. What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> Farewell, Frodo Baggins. I give you the light of Erendil. That was one of the things we've talked about with uh, a lot of modern stuff, is that how do you parody it? What do you do with it? Make Parody's... something good. I mean, yeah. I think kind of. <laughs> yeah. It, 
it's this scene that always like stuck with me. It was the combination of the Isengard theme and also just the slow mo Urukai like running yep. through the forest. <laughs> It was years between me seeing this movie for the first time and then like seeing the full trilogy uh, in the extended editions. For years, I always remembered that one scene. Something about it. It's really fucking good. Colonel, he's tracked us since morning. I can't even remember what the theatrical versions are now. You haven't eaten anything all day. And you're not sleeping either. Don't think I haven't noticed. I've only watched the theatrical of Fellowship and it was just like weird seeing it because it's like mm -hmm. where's all the fucking scenes that are important to the story i'm here to help you i promised gandalf that i would because of course there was a reason that the theatrical cuts ended up being the way that they were but i mean now now that the extended exists and you can watch it you can't help me sam not this time well yeah that's funny because yeah. like i bought the 4k physical release of the movies and it's like we got the theatrical editions in here too and it's like well i'm just gonna throw those away oh, I don't... Minas Tirith is a safer road you know that from there we can regroup but i thought this is kind of when everything starts to break apart like gandalf's not yeah. there to keep them together so now they're like fraying at the edges yes there is weakness there is frailty but there is courage also and honor to be found in men Yes. Strike out for Mordor from a place of strength. There is no strength in Gondor that can avail us. Yeah, Barm is. He's but just he's doing thinking a lot about. Thinking, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. What are you thinking about? You were quick enough to trust the elves. You've so little faith in your own people. All your life, you have hidden in the shadows, scared of who you are, of what you are. Oh, big important scene coming. Well, all of the big yeah. important scenes are coming. I will not lead the ring within a hundred leagues of your city. You had on us. They put actors on canoes. What's the point? They That's did. like a thing. It's so, it's, you think like, well, of course they did. Where's Frodo? Arguably the best part of the movie coming. Uh, maybe, yeah. I know why you seek solitude. You suffer. I see it day by day. There's a few that could be argued for, for sure. Well, no, I'm, I'm just saying, I this scene is fantastic. It's, it might be. I know what you would say, and it would seem like wisdom, but for the warning in my heart. There's the literally not a second of this movie. A se no, there is one second of this movie. It's one second. Elrond. <laughs> <Right. laughs> It, it's it's that fucking Elrond <laughs> shot. It's the only part of the movie that I don't like. The other three and a half hours I love. Warning. Against what? They're all afraid, Frodo. Look, I'm just humbly gathering some firewood. That's all I'm doing. To let that fear drive us to destroy what hope we have. Don't you see? That is madness. I love how fucking natural this looks. You wouldn't guess that this is forced perspective at all. I ask only for the strength to defend my feet. If you would Lend me the ring. No. Standing in front of a giant broken statue head, too. I mean, just... Uh. It, that's one of those things where it's like, what's that? You don't need to know what it is for anything to make sense. It's just like, here's a cool thing. Why do you recoil? I am no thief. You are not yourself. Yeah, like, this whole area is littered with, like, decaying statues and ruins and stuff. It's all part of, like, the Kingdom of Gondor, I guess, that's just shrunk over the years. Yeah. It's great. It just gives you little bits of world building. What chance do you think you have? They will find you. Listen, just lend me it. Just for I'll a totally sec. give it back, bro. And you will beg for death before the end. <laughs> This is the thing. From his POV, this seems like the most right decision. He's just a little hobbit. What's he like? A little hobbit ain't gonna destroy the ring after everything uh, that's happened. Go. It is not your save by unhappy chance. It could have been mine. It should be mine. But it doesn't make any sense to let it just be given to a hobbit. It's like just fucking give it over, idiot. No. Give me the ring. No. Uh, but he realizes a little detail of making the wood shake. Yeah. <laughs> that paranoia as well. Mm -hmm. So it gets you praising all your weaknesses and fears. You will take the ring to Sauron. You will betray us. You go to your death, and the death of us all. Oh man, this is Boromir's low point. He's gonna come out of it. Frodo. 
Please. Uh, this is dude. When you get the context of who this man is, like back in Gondor. <laughs> Arguably, his best scene is, I mean, if not here, it'll be in the, the extended in two towers. I like the him getting emotional over that. It's not just, like, what he did to Frodo. It's that, like, he knows what happens when everyone else finds out about what he did. Yeah, it's just a weakness that's been completely exposed. Probably take that ring off now, huh? <laughs> What's funny is this structure they're near in the uh, Return of the King game. No, the Two Towers game. The level starts here, and if you go up the stairs, there's a really good XP boost at the top of it. Go grab that. Frodo carries the fate of us all. We must defend him. Yeah, Aragorn's like, I'm not, I'm, I'm chill. I, I fucking, I'm super nice. I said you have my sword. I swore to protect you. Can you protect me from yourself? Yeah, it's this point onward for the entire rest of the movie that I think about whenever I think about this movie. Would you destroy it? Everything about it's fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. All the things we praise so far, but also Amon Hen as a whole, is uh, his fellowship just comes up slightly above the other two for me. I just. I think what I like about it is that, or what I prefer fellowship over the other two is. I would have gone with you to the end. Into the very fires of Mordor. It's so character focused. Not that character isn't a big part of the next two movies, but I prefer all this stuff over any of the big siege battles that we get later on. Look after the others, especially Sam. He will not understand. This fight somehow is very personal. Yeah. It, yeah. Like the fact that he tells Frodo to run and he's like, I'm willing to die just to hold them off. That's yeah. like, that's like mm -hmm. his character. And that's why I fucking love him. Yep. Go, <sighs> Frodo. Like, I find this scene so much more emotionally impactful than the Battle of the Pelennor Fields or the siege at uh, Helm's Deep. I, I wouldn't say so much more. Run! I love those well, two, I, but yeah, well, I, I, Amon Hand is pretty amazing. Well, I, Look I, at I this, saw, though. I'm speaking for me. <laughs> this shot. Oh, oh God, it's, it's so, so cool. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Oh, it's, why is my favorite character fucking love him? The fact that he has to run away because he's like, oh, I'm gonna be fucked if I just stay out in the open like this. Look at it, it's surrounded, and then who comes in but not his two best buddies? God, I love the music for this battle. It's so amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Frodo's 17th fall. I should keep a fall counter when I edit these. <laughs> yeah. Gradual realization of what's going on here. Yeah. Run, Frodo. Go. Hey! Hey! 
hate you! You know what we need is explicit dialogue from Frodo saying, I'm not going with you. <laughs> I'm exactly. going to go somewhere I'm else. going to take the ring to Mordor by myself. That way, we won't have trouble with people trying uh, to take Mary, it off me. Mary and Pippin are such lads. Oh, yeah. Over here! This way! It's working! I know it's working! Run! This, this is what I mean. Yeah, this, this moment here where there's like, they know they're leading these guys to their deaths. Barmia's sacrifice is built on another two different characters' his choice to sacrifice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gives him his chance. It's all about that teamwork. <laughs> Fuck him up, Legolas. Yes. It's just, it's just awesome, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the shit you can't help but absolutely thrive in emotionally. Here he comes. Barmia. Get in there, buddy. Yes. No hesitation, just charges right oh. in. Yep. And Mary and Pippin are fighting as well. Look at him. Badass fucking throw. I love this shot. It's so <laughs> Aragorn just fighting that one there while Legolas is... Yeah. <laughs> He's dealing with that one guy. Like, Legolas, can you shoot this guy <laughs> Give me a hand, yeah. bro. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm having a lot of trouble here. Bear. The Horn of Gondor. The Horn. Uh, on this one, yeah. Drawing your Gondor allies to you, but drawing the enemies to him as well. Oh, this shot is brilliant. What a great pan and show. Oh, it gives you a huge scope of the battlefield, right. makes it feel yeah, completely yeah. alive. Gives you a good logistic of where everyone is. Yep. I, I like how, map. like, not smooth it looks, too. Like, it doesn't That's feel artificial. Crane. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it works so well. You're right. <laughs> One of the big problems I had with the Hobbit movies is that, like, they would do shots kind of like that, but they were too smooth and it felt fake. <laughs> that crane shot and a lot of these other shots feel more visceral and handheld. Like, these aren't, like, super graphic movies, but they don't feel sanitized like The Hobbit does. Yeah. Oh, the choice of violence always feels very, very specific. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, people listening to this. We're just going to enjoy the scene for now. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to be watching the movie. It just sort of happens. <laughs> yeah, such a like... The music just stops for a moment. Yep, and, this, and that thunk. <laughs> I don't know, this is just like this sense of, this is it, but it doesn't mean yep. you don't, you stop. I mean, to go out like this. One day I'm going to force Jay to watch these movies with me, and if he doesn't like it, I'm going to put him in a saw trap. This, so the, uh, I'm done, but then sees them, and it's like, no, fuck, I'm not done. The endurance of a fucking human spirit, that's all this comes across to me. He's not gonna stop until he absolutely can't go on. The third arrow. Which to me is the correct amount. You don't want it to get extreme, like a thousand arrows, but you also want it to be more than one or two. Yep. It's just too many. And yeah, I love what um, Pippin has to say about this to Denethor as well. It's recognized. Uh, and it, it all goes back to the scenes with Aragorn and you know, the Council of Elrond, right? Where he's talking about man's ability to defend Middle Earth for, you know, on behalf of all the other races. Man's strength and courage, like that's something that's present, that's something to preserve. That man could defend the world from darkness, right? Like, that, like that's his insecurities as a person, that he, whether he's enough to be that protector. And of course, his last moments are that of failing as a protector. To never know if Merry and Pippin are actually going to be safe. It's like a perfect microcosm of the. The overall insecurities he has as Gondor in Middle Earth, but Boromir to these two. It's absolutely tragic, but uh, bloody brilliant. 
acing that arrow like a champ as well. Yep. This fucking fight is so raw. It is so raw. <laughs> I mean, it's and great because it doesn't go on too long. It doesn't overstay its welcome here. It feels very real. No, it's savage though. But the, uh, our theater like erupted in cheers when Lord's got beheaded. Yeah. The legendary deflection. <laughs> the sound of it as well. Yeah. When he licks the knife. <laughs> Oh, this is totally champion versus demon of hell, basically. Yeah! Brilliant boss fight. So to the girl in Mahler's class who was scared by that. Fuck you. They took the little ones. He's down. Frodo. Where is Frodo? The you first thing that he shit. says. The first thing he says, they took the little ones. Yeah. I tried to take the ring from him. Forgive me. I did not see. Because that's what he is at the core. He's a protector of people. That's his whole role. And that's where the insecurity stems from, is not being able to fulfill that role. I have failed you all. No more of you. You fought bravely. It is over. The world of men will fall. So that simultaneous, like, I would have loved to have seen what this story would have looked like if Barmia made it. And all will come to darkness. And my to ruin. But also, like... It would have been it, very interesting, because it would have been, like, very important. Yeah. I will not let the White City fall. Our people fail. But, uh, there's something so important about him recognizing Aragorn's role as well. Our people. Our people. Yeah, absolutely pitch perfect. Wouldn't change a thing. I would have followed you, my brother, my captain, my king. This man who's been brought up under the shadow of, of a person who's desperate to prove that they, like, control... You know, like, Denethor's got a lot of insecurities that I think really help inform Barmia's point of view, which is that they need to make sure they earn their right to be in, essentially, control of Minas Tirith until, you know, the line of kings returns. And so, like, they not only need to inspire, they need to be strong, they need to be courageous, they need to show the rest of Middle-earth that they're the ones that can protect, they're the ones that have been given this responsibility and that they can pull through with it. And they do, Barmia being the one that we get told is, is regularly, like, keeping us Gilead uh, within the realm of men instead of allowing it to fall to Mordor and then being sent to go and grab this weapon that's going to end it it's going to destroy Mordor forever and he's like that's kind of exciting that's kind of invigorating he gets there and all these people are like we're going to destroy it we're going we're gonna to hand it to some fucking child basically and he's like what in the hell are you guys talking about and then you know because he has respect for Elrond and the nature of the elves and stuff and he's like okay fine I'll go with you and I'll, I'll ensure this to happen spends the whole time ensuring the safety of the fellowship but at the same time falling gradually to the temptation of the ring, which is something that I always find is a really interesting variable for all the characters to have to deal with. That, that ring, that fucking ring is bringing him down all the time. And yeah, of course he breaks. One of the little bits that I really uh, noticed on a recent wash through is when they arrive at um, I, I forget the place where it's basically Amon Head and they're all getting off the boats everyone's basically fine and uh, and the camera hangs on him for a little bit and he's just fucking like he can't handle it anymore he's constantly thinking about it and he's like shaking a bit looking down just like oh okay like because it's, 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 it's all he's, he's thinking about he talks about when, he, when we reach Galadriel right that she tells him don't worry like men will be fine Gondor won't fall and he all he says to Aragorn is I don't believe her it's not gonna happen man is like doomed we have to get the ring it's the most important thing ever and his um his interest is desperation to get that thing it just represents the fact that he wants to save the world he wants to protect people and he knows he's gonna fail without it and then he he has his moment with frodo which uh is his obviously low point which brings you right into his highest point which is uh sacrificing himself to save two people and those three arrows that that the way that he goes down it's like one of the most heroic deaths in all of media always stuck with me and uh, yeah, the everything he says to Aragorn, and I love that Aragorn takes the moment to inspire him and tell him like it's gonna be okay. Like right before he dies, he tells him everything he wants to hear, which is that man will be saved, that Aragorn won't let them fail, and that uh, Boromir did his job. Is uh, there's nothing to be ashamed of? He did everything right, sort of thing. It's uh... oh, he's great. A lot happens in this film. A lot does happen in this film. I would fucking hope a lot happens in a three and a half hour runtime. Well, it's kind of a brought up Take a lot these granted. days, right? Because um, a lot of people resort to a runtime complaint with films that are of that length. They will look for his coming from the White Tower, but he will not return. 
but we all know the truth of it would be pacing. And like how much of it was actually like important. Frodo! The fucking, how much of Zack Snyder's Justice League <laughs> is even remotely relevant? Oh no. I wish none of this had happened. So do all who live to see such times, but that is not for them to decide. I mostly have resentment toward him for wasting four and a half hours of my time. He brought us Ezra Miller. All you have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to you. I feel bad. We should be acknowledging this scene is great, too. This incredible yes. scene, we, this we fucking gem of cinema in front of our eyes. Not alone! Frodo! This is Acknowledge Sam the fact that showing his uh, zeal. Sean Aston cut his foot trying to swim over here. Go back, Sam! Going to Mordor alone. He risked great infection for the sake of this movie's quality. Yes. Infections are temporary. Good cinema is forever. Mm-hmm. And I'm coming with you! You can't <laughs> swim! <laughs> Sam! Oh, Frodo, you don't understand the investment you've made here. He's gonna come through for you time Destruct and time Peter. again. It would be a really dick move to accuse him of eating all your food and then send him away. Don't you leave him, Samwise Gamgee. And I don't mean to. They did not hang on that for very long, but super important detail. The fellowship has failed. What if we hold true to each other? I appreciate the fact that it doesn't treat us like we're stupid. And oh God, yeah, so. dude, yeah. that... We will not abandon Mary and Pippin to torment and death. That's another thing that's been taken for granted, I think, is not being treated like a fucking baby in media. I don't even associate that with Lord of the Rings, but you rewatch them and you're like, oh yeah, of course they treated me like an adult. That is handsome, Orc. Yeah! I mean, nowadays you have, you know, children writing, so they, you know, think the audiences are children too. An intelligent person writing maybe has a bit more confidence in their audience. And yeah, I very much enjoy the motivation is full and fiery with them just for getting Merry and Pippin. We gotta get them. We owe it to them. I don't suppose we'll ever see them again. We may yet, Mr. Frodo. We may. Always a voice of hope. Story has got its splits. You need a Sam in your life. Like, I think yeah, everyone does. Oh, everyone yes. should have a Sam. You need someone who brings a little box of salt just in case you... Ah!